Hello everyone! Welcome to the Blackfeather Guild. Uh, so we're doing a Friday night uh, community one-shot. We do these every Friday night uh, to get folks from the community in. Uh, in addition to standard cast members that we have uh, for persistent campaigns. Um, tonight we're going to be doing something uh, has a special place in my heart uh, because it is in the world of Badlands, which we just finished our, our series finale for uh, at the end of the last season. Uh, so a three-season campaign that kind of came to an and end at, as we reached the end of the story that we wanted to tell. Um, but now we get to kind of revisit it a little bit. Uh, our, char our cast and characters are going to be trying to escape from a uh, time-haunted uh, research asylum from the 1920s uh, in the year 3636 with um, the evil Xander uh, orchestrating um, sort of their rats-in-a-maze type situation. Uh, so I'm looking really forward to it. Uh, we've got a great cast. Most of the Badlands cast, actually, uh, are, are back for this one playing new characters. It's going to be really fun. Um, before I do introduce everyone, though, I wanted to take a quick second to mention uh, how you as the audience can actually actively participate in the game. Uh, there's a lot of really cool ways that you can do so. One of the easiest ways is through the tweet of the game, which is there in chat. For every 10 interactions on that, that's likes, retweets, and comments. Uh, a D4 goes into the pool for the cast and for the DM, which is me in this case. Um, and that can be used on any roll to uh, boost the numbers. It's really great for if you're almost going to succeed at that DC, but you're just a couple of points short. Uh, it can make a big difference there. Um, other ways that you can do so are through... Uh, uh, guild coins, uh, more specifically the plot points you can get with guild coins. Uh, if you look over here on this side, uh, you can see all the different ones, uh, anywhere from one to four plot points and how many guild coins they cost. Uh, you can do anything from an inconsequential plot effect, such as renaming a business or an NPC, all the way up to uh, four plot points, which is a major plot effect. Um, mostly those are a boon or a, a curse, depending on what you want to do, uh, for the cast. Um, so you can actually uh, give them something that they will, uh, it's up to the DM really, but uh, you can have them receive something that they critically need right when they need it the most, or you can do the curse, which denies them something they critically need right when they need it the most, and they have to figure something else out. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with those. There's a full explanation of them in the panels down below, or you can click on the little rainbow colored icon uh, below the Twitch chat box uh, to see all the different options there as well. Uh, and then finally, if you want to help support the channel uh, financially, help keep the lights on and whatnot, uh, there's a whole little chart right over here that you can see. Um, and you can do those through coffee.com slash raven, raven.rocks. Uh, for, for direct donations, you can do subscriptions, uh, bits as well. 
Uh, and uh, we do have options through Patreon. Uh, so if you're a bard tier patron or higher, you get credits every month towards viewer actions that you can use uh, in that way. Uh, so a whole lot of different options. Uh, real quick to run through what, uh, what all these little things mean over here. Uh, D4, D6, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, they get added to a pool that the players can use uh, to help boost their roles. Uh, switch allows somebody to change somebody else's action word um, or, or make them change their action word, I should say. So for example, if you had somebody that was playing a bard in a game and they wanted to seduce the barmaid, uh, and the DM was getting really tired of the bard always seducing the barmaid, uh, the DM could throw out a switch and say you have to do something else, uh, and they have to change the action word there to something that's not directly synonymous. Uh, it's a fun little way to nudge the story in different directions. Um, advantage just means that uh, before the player rolls, they can say they want to use the advantage. They'll roll twice and take the higher of the two rolls. Uh, and then the re-roll, uh, it's very similar, uh, except that you could use it after the fact. So if a player is sitting there going, man, I really wish I'd used an, an advantage because this roll is horrible, uh, a re-roll lets them uh, do that after the fact. Uh, complication, you just throw in one to three sentences into Twitch chat and uh, say what you want to add or change or remove from the scene. You kind of get to be the DM for a couple of seconds. Uh, same way with the plot points, the DM does have final say on what gets uh, put in. So they may edit your idea a little bit to make it fit the game a little bit better. Um, but we do try to stick as close to what you say as possible. Uh, and then finally, the swap two players for five minutes uh, means that they will swap characters. Um, so you could have two different players playing each other's characters for five minutes or even swapping out with the DM. Uh, it's really, really fun. Uh, it's always great to see uh, uh, the different players, uh, you know, imitating uh, each other uh, with their characters. And then finally, the one-up uh, is essentially a, uh, a safety net. Uh, if a character would go down to zero hit points or otherwise die, uh, and rather than dying or passing out, they uh, stay at one hit point. So if you've got a character you particularly want to save, um, or if you're really worried about the cast's characters uh, dying, uh, which in this game is quite a possibility, um, that's one way that you can make sure that they survive. Uh, all that being said, um, I think that is uh, everything I needed to cover, so let's get in and talk to the cast. Hello everyone! So we're going to do some quick introductions before we jump into the game. Uh, starting with uh, the top left spot. So, Rowan, tell us a little bit about uh, Nana and yourself. Fantastic. Uh, next, we've got uh, Gwen. Tell us a little bit about Nora and yourself. Hmm. I am so sorry. Hold on one one second. Uh, I forgot to unmute the cast. Sorry oh. about that. Um, so let's uh, let's rewind real quick. Uh, Rowan, can you give us uh, a quick summary of what you just said? Sorry, I had you all muted. Oh no. Okay. Uh, I play Nana Alba. She's very cute, fluffy, and quiet. Uh, but, or at least you think she is. Uh, I'm Rowan North. I'm a freelance illustrator. I'm gonna post my website on the side. So. Fantastic. Uh, now, Gwen. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Nora is 24, red hair, uh, red bow in her hair, uh, brown skirt, um, yeah, ha has a personality, <laughs> and, and speaks her mind. Okay. Awesome. Um, you can find, you can find us at Village System on Twitter, all of us. Awesome, cool. 
Uh, next, we've got Zan. Tell us a little bit about Cliff Strashford and yourself. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Zan, and I am the only player unfamiliar with, uh, with this setting, system, or storyline. Uh, so I am super excited to uh, make a complete goob out of myself. Uh, though I guess you could say it's tangentially related since um, the the main villain and I seem to share a name, something that I'm I'm still uh, tickled about pretty heavily. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm uh, I'm Zan. I'm a professional DM and uh, uh, content creator for various tabletop games. Um, if you need me, you can find me at the links that I just dropped into chat. And Cliff is a. Um, uh, just a bit of a uh somebody who's kind of just looking for uh just looking for now um very chatty uh very flirty um but definitely gives off an, a, a vibe of what exactly are you doing here okay very cool uh next we've got uh lisa tell us a little bit about uh is it dom donald did i say that right Donal. Donal. Yeah. Donal. That's a weird one. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I like it. Like Donal Gleason from Star Wars. Okay. Um, but so Donal is the worst. He's only twelve, and he's a brat, and you'll want to smack him. He's just kind of one of those kids <laughs> that knows the difference between right and wrong, and doesn't care. So. <laughs> well, I love nice. So, already. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, fantastic. Uh, and then last but not least, we've got Riley with uh, Bella. Tell us a little bit about Bella and yourself. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm a crochet and knitwear designer and uh, blogger. You can find me at my Twitter, which is right below me. And then in that description is my website, <laughs> um, but it's www.arielianets.com. Um, I am playing Bella. Bella is nine years old. Um, she's very smart and um, aware of what's going on around her, but she's also very spoiled and self-centered. She is really good at magic and she knows it so she's very cocky and what was the word can't remember it but yes he's uh, fun precocious uh it's the one it's the flaw i have what's it called it starts with an a oh arrogant thank you uh, thank you zan yes arrogant <laughs> she is very arrogant there we go. All right, cool. Uh, well, to, to start us off, um, to give everyone a, a quick explanation of the world in which our characters comes are coming from, um, it's the year 3636. The world has basically been um, all but annihilated by uh, magic-infused nuclear warheads, uh, essentially, uh, to put it into a nutshell. Um, so magic is commonplace uh, because the world has basically been saturated with this material that uh, allows people to do magic. Um, and uh, uh, sorry, my brain just went completely blank. Um, so my cat's getting into stuff, sorry. Uh, so the world has magic in it and uh, is a bit of a, a post-apocalyptic type setting. Um, there are uh, still cities and things like that. Everybody's pretty much uh, at a point where the world as it is is their normal. Um, and that's sort of the world that these characters have been taken from. Uh, and they find themselves waking up uh, in uh, basically a, a really big uh, prison cell type room. Um, it's uh, a lot of just plain, like, cinder blocks type walls. Um, there's no window. Uh, the only thing that's uh, really of note in the room is a heavy metal door uh, with a tiny barred window set in it. Um, they're uh, in uh, 
the, the Clark Research Asylum. Uh, they don't know that yet, um, but that's where they are, uh, which is a building from the 1920s, uh, which has a lot of weird things that happen with it. Um, so we're going to start with everybody waking up. Um, you're waking up in this nondescript cinder block room. It's cold. It's the room smells like it's just been old and stagnant for a really long time. Uh, what do you all do as you wake up together in this room? Do you, um, perhaps some of you know each other. Perhaps none of you know each other. Uh, it was entirely up to you. Oh my head! Where are we? Um, this is uh, a little, uh, a little bit of an unusual situation. Um, uh, hi, it's, uh, it's, how you think. it's so nice to meet everyone. Uh, why am I here? What are we doing? Well, I, I That's don't know why. Good question. I, I don't know how we got here at all. I, uh, I was just, uh, you know, minding my own business. It was on the road. I don't know. I don't know how I got. Uh, I don't know how I ended up in this place here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh Donald! Hi, um, I, I'm a couple years behind you in school, but my name's Bella. It's nice to see you. Oh God. Uh, oh God, no. Oh, oh no! It it seems like I'm the adult in the room. Um, well, don't worry. Uh, this is gonna be uh, well, we're we're gonna have uh, us a really fun time here today. Uh, Shut up, Grandpa! Oh. Excuse me, did you kidnap us? Ah, uh, I uh, probably did. I, I don't yeah, have any. Uh, creepy enough. I I don't have any memory of this. I'm not. I'm not. Um, Let's, let's put a pin in that for now, shall we? Let's, My let's not parents go in the will accident. hear about this. Well, uh, that's I'm... assuming that you get out of here. <laughs> that sounded like a threat. Uh, wow. I, I don't know how I feel about this. This is, uh, you know, but uh, to let you know that I am an adult, I, I, I work and I live with, in my own house. I'm, I'm so like sorry. That, I, so. I, I, I cannot hear you. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you. Uh, what, what was that? Can you, can you say that again? Um, Maybe look me in the eye this time. Uh, I was just saying, I was just, uh, just saying that I, uh, I'm also an adult. I live on my own. I'm independent. I, you know, it, it's not like we're all children here, right? Um, well, I think that remains to be seen. Right. Um, <laughs> right about that moment, uh, you hear a scratchy sort of uh, old radio sounding speaker in the corner that none of you had noticed before. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of static and uh, just like that, that old timey uh, open microphone noise without anybody speaking for a solid like 10, 15 seconds. And then you hear someone clear their throat. <clears throat> oh good, you're all awake. I uh, assume you all have plenty of questions, but you'll have to sort of figure out the answers as you go. Uh, however, I can give you some information. You've all been chosen for unique qualities which you all possess. Uh, we're going to run something of a little experiment, you could say. You're sick, you know that? So, here's the deal. I, uh... We'll run this experiment. You all can try to escape, uh, figure out the puzzles and things along the way, and uh, let's say that uh, whoever wins gets the prize, and whoever comes in second place gets to live. And the rest of you, well, don't. Is this a pervert thing? This sounds like a pervert thing. This is right up my alley. I'm very smart. Oh my god, Bella. You just... ah. That's... <laughs> Intelligence is one of the things I'm looking for, so... Uh, especially that, that sort of arrogance will, will get you far in this 
this challenge here. So you know, I, rather I like will hand you all to a, like absorb you. this information. I like living. Living uh, is good. Living is... Oh, I don't... Living is good. I'm sure you've done so much so living. So try sleepy. your best to stay alive. <laughs> Anyways, your first challenge is to get out of this room. Good luck. And the speaker clicks off. So, Nana checks the door. Is it like a wooden door, a metal door? It is a heavy metal door uh, with a small barred window. Okay. And um, as far as you can tell, uh, there doesn't seem to be a, a real handle on the door. Um, doesn't look like there's a way to easily open it from inside. What about the floor? Is the floor, uh, uh, what material is the floor made out of? Uh, the floor is uh, also seems to be uh, some sort of cinder block, concrete type material. There's and there's I definitely think... grooves where it's been pieced together, uh, but um, so it's not one solid piece. But it is uh, it is concrete. Um, you can do certain things like uh, roll sight to inspect things a little bit more closely if you'd like. Um, but at a glance, these are the things that you notice. Um, can I see and then Nora anywhere. We'll, there, the only window in the room is in the door. Uh, you could try to, uh, it's kind of high up on the door. You could uh, sort of step on your tippy toes and, and potentially see out of it. Oh, awesome. If you'd like to roll sight and do that. Absolutely, I will. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. Uh, so that's a 20, not natural. So modified 20. Uh, as you look out the door, um, you can see that it's a dimly lit hallway. Um, seems to be a mixture of natural light and um, like some sort of uh, possibly a fluorescent type bulb. Um, you don't see the light source uh, directly outside. Uh, you can just tell that it's uh, coming from further down what looks like a hallway. Um, and it's definitely a mixture of light sources. Um, the doors look, or uh, the floors rather, look dirty. There's debris everywhere. Uh, you can see some similar uh, rooms across the hall uh, with the rooms, or uh, with the doors open. Cool. I would, um, I would just make and a gate. <laughs> one more thing, uh, which may influence your decision. <laughs> Uh, as you're looking towards one of the far corners, uh, you see a black shadow uh, just sort of dart into one of the rooms directly across from yours. Uh, and the figure looks um, kind of like Slenderman in, in terms of uh, features. Uh, so very tall and skinny, and um, it's moving in such a way uh, that it's not somebody moving in front of the light source. It's moving uh, against the light rather than with it. Okay, stand back everybody, I got this. Open the portal up here and out there. Uh, okay, it roll magic engineering. Uh... Well, I'd just like to say if there's anything you need burned, I can burn things really, really well, so... Um, so, 39. That's okay. a creepier than I thought. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, Nora, you are able to open a gate from inside your cell uh, to the hallway outside. Now, when we step through, just uh, avoid and... the room that I tell you to. There's a creepy guy went into it. Yeah, sure. Everybody through here. That's probably where the prize is. I wouldn't bet on it, kid. Okay, so who all's going through the portal right now? Uh, I know Nora is. Oh, well, I mean, well, there doesn't seem to be anything else exciting happening in this room, so, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Well... Okay. Guess there's no other real way, so yeah, I guess that seems okay. 
whatever. <laughs> oh, with, well, if Domino's going through, I guess I will too. Awesome. Uh, as you all step through uh, and end up in the hallway, a couple of things happen. Uh, first, that same sort of uh, tinny speaker sounding, uh, old timey radio kind of static uh, effect to it uh, on some speakers coming from somewhere. You're not quite sure where, uh, but it starts playing, and it's it's like um, it's like a 1920s uh, band style fanfare, um, as if you just accomplished something great and now you're being uh, applauded. Um, so that comes on the speakers and then after uh, a couple of seconds of it, it starts to warp. Um, the sound gets very garbled and it sounds uh, almost like if you were, uh, uh, if you had a tape player, like an old cassette uh, tape player uh, where the battery was winding, uh, powering down, which so gets slower and slower and deeper sounding. And you notice uh, the wall starting to ripple, um, doing things that concrete walls definitely should not do. Um, with that, I need everyone to roll discipline. Hello, Sandy, my old friend. Um, some issues with uh, 21 music for some reason. Okay. 21. Okay. Uh, 17. There we go. Uh, okay. Mm, nope. Nope. Don't. Uh, don't. Nope. Concrete is uh, is not supposed to. Uh, it's suppo not That's supposed cool to do this. Get in a. Uh, yeah, this is a little strange, everyone. Don't you don't you think it's a I'm I'm not just the only one seeing this, right? It's just you. That ain't this, normal for sure. This is a this is a shared experience. Nope. Well, I mean that there was a you know a forest uh you know more east where the trees and things would move in ways they weren't supposed to, but I mean in general, normally concrete okay. okay. doesn't necessarily move. I, I don't can not you, can normal you just, at all. Thank thank you for your input. I appreciate that. Um. Oh, uh, should we? Sh should we maybe? Uh... So, should I be concerned about where you're from? Me? Yeah, you. That was the. Uh, I think they used to call it the New York. Um, I don't know where we are now. There was a lot so, of. Forest. I have a question. Hmm? Uh, something I forgot to get from you. Um, uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, Nana. What is your, uh, either your mental or your spiritual score, whichever is higher? My spiritual is four. Four, okay. My mental is three, so just under that. Okay. Uh, which would you say is uh, the attribute that Nana relies on more? Spiritual, because she sets things on fire. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nora, same question. Uh, which, between spiritual and mental, which one does Nora rely on the most, and which is the higher? Uh, where's mental? Oh. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about attributes. Mental is higher. Okay. Um, and which would you say that Nora relies on more? Just Nora in her day-to-day -day life. Okay, uh, so what was the score for your mental? Four. Four? Okay. Uh, Cliff, same question. Uh, the higher of the two is spiritual at, uh, at three, um, but uh, Cliff probably relies more on mental, which is at two. Okay. Uh, and then Bella? Um, Bella relies on, uh, probably mental more, but it's tied with spiritual at three. Okay. Three. Okay. And then Dom, uh, Donald, Donald. 
Um, actually, the exact Don't. same as Don't Bella. Know. It's three and tied. And I okay. would say that he relies on mental as well. Okay. In that case, um, because I forgot, this has a little, a little bit of a special, uh, another special, uh, scoring system. Uh. Uh, called sanity. Um, <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, good news. Don't donal. Yep. Did I say it right that yep. time? Okay. I don't know why that's giving me so much trouble. Donal. It's a weird thing. Uh, you experience this. Uh, the the weird sound warping, the the walls rippling, uh, and all of that. And for some reason, you're okay with it. Um. <laughs> Maybe you think it's special effects. Maybe that's how you kind of explained it away to yourself. Um, but uh, it doesn't really get to you. Uh, for literally everyone else. Um, <laughs> I, I love you. Uh, <laughs> you all are really creeped out by this. I mean, it is. there's just something deeply unsettling about the fact that the the music is making that noise and the walls are rippling and for those that rely on your your mental attribute more um uh, you, you try to explain explain it away maybe it's you know smoke and mirrors or something um but uh even if you do kind of say that out loud or or believe that on the surface deep down you know that something's really wrong um those that rely on spiritual just feel really uncomfortable, like there's an evil aura or um, some sort of just oppressive uh, kind of energy coming off of these walls. Um, and so you're all going to take a... Uh, uh, doing a little bit different this time, so an insanity point. Um, and basically, uh, you don't want that to get up to twice your attributes. So, uh, so Nana and Nora, you're at eight. Cliff, you're at five. Uh, I just kind of split the difference between your two highest. Uh, and then Bella at and Donal, uh, you're at six. Uh, and then a small rat in a black trench coat comes out, screams in a Hispanic accent, "Oh my god! Oh 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 my god!" And then runs off, further disturbing you. <laughs> what was that? I mean. This is just like a shitty haunted house. What is what is this? Very so lame. Yeah, it's total. It's totally lame. Um, I think I've heard of rat people before under the subways in New York City. I think, or used to be New York City. Mostly, like there's a lot of weird people down there now. I'm sorry, but nobody understands what you're saying. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is uh, this is all this is all well and good, but uh, how about you? Uh, what, what does everyone say? We get the fuck out of here, huh? I uh, yeah. I'm not really enjoying this hallway at the moment. I mean, th th that's kind of a given. But who are we? Well, then why are the fuck are we sitting around talking? <laughs> Let's go. But where do we go? What way do this we go? This way. So any any okay. room that's not that room and points to the one where so, you saw the person go into. <laughs> yes. So you do have options. Uh, so uh, directly across and to the left is the room that Nora saw the the figure go into. Um, there are several other rooms with the doors uh, sort of cracked open. Uh, there's a hallway that you're standing in, uh, which has. A direction goes to the left uh, as you're uh, facing away from the room that you just came from. Uh, and the left path, um, there's not as much light. It seems to get darker and darker the further in you get. Uh, the path to the right, um, there is light. Uh, that's where the natural, the mix of natural and fluorescent lights coming from um, that you could go. Uh, so those are uh, all of the uh, obvious options that are available. Um, and then Cliff, in particular, uh, I don't think anybody else really sees this, uh, but you also see that black shadowy figure um, 
and uh, it's almost two-dimensional. Um, as you see it, it's it's like it's clinging along the wall. Um, it, it's just slightly three-dimensional, so you can tell it's not really a shadow, but it, it looks like one and it behaves like one. And you see it extend a hand out with a finger just doing a beckoning motion, beckoning you to, to come to where they are. Hey, uh, hey. Thanks for those follows, by the way. Excuse me, what, who, who are you? Hey, uh, it's, it, what, what's going on here? Hey, excuse me, excuse me. Sir, 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 excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Mister, gonna, are you okay? I'm, I'm going to walk towards it. Who are you uh, talking okay. to? I, as you, uh, as you walk towards it and, you know, do the, uh, excuse me, sir, to it, it just slowly recedes back into the room. Um, the door stays cracked, um, but it, it slinks back into the room. I'm going to open the door with an um, authority. Am I the only sane okay. one here? I knew it! The prize must be in there! Yeah, um... Uh, as you open the door, um... Sure. D describe for me how you open the door with an air of authority. Uh, uh, I'm like, going what exactly are you doing? Uh, to uh, uh, open it fully before uh, I take a step inside and uh, uh, am uh, making a full like right to left pivot with my head as I uh, cross the threshold into the room. Uh, chest out, okay. um, um, for lack of a better term, a, a, an air of let me speak to your manager. Okay. So Karen, as you do this, I'm first going to describe what everybody else sees. Uh, so you see Cliff throw open this door, uh, saying, excuse me, sir, to seemingly nothing. Um, and then as they step through, it's as if they stepped uh, through a curtain. A, a room uh, designed or a room print curtain. Uh, you can still see inside the room. Um, Everything looks exactly normal, except for the fact that Cliff literally disappears as he walks through the door. Um, Cliff, you find yourself uh, in a smaller room than what you started in, uh, but it's similar. So no windows, cinder block walls, closed door, uh, small window with bars over it, no door handle. Shit. Sir? Sir? Excuse me. I've got some questions I would really like answered. Yes, sir. Are you okay? Keep saying uh, sir a lot. None of you know... None of you know where Cliff is. None of you are hearing this. Betty's in on um, this. Yeah. So, Cliff, uh, as you say that, uh, you hear that same speaker sound. Uh, so the, the, the tinny, old radio sounding speaker... Uh, just echoing the exact same things that you're saying in your own voice. Um, everybody else, what do you do? Well, he's on. And we'll come back to Cliff in a sec. Well, he's dead. That was nice knowing him. Well, let's <laughs> yeah. go. Let's Wait, go man in the speaker. In the opposite direction. Man in the speaker. How do we win the game again? <sighs> oh, well, this is unusual. Usually people are just screaming and cursing or yelling at the speakers. Um, no one's you impressed can call me at Xander. your stupid haunted house crap. <laughs> what they said. See, that's the, the type of response I usually get. Uh, to answer your question, though, uh, Bella, I believe it was, uh, you can call me Xander, and as for how you win, you just have to prove that you're the best, and then you get the special prize, or you can come in second, and you get to leave. Well, why is the second prize better than So, the first prize? how do I prove I'm the best? Well, you need to show that you're better than everyone else. Um, 
that you have a certain penchant for either survival, intelligence, or magic. And if you wanted to kill your friends, uh, that would not uh, be bad, necessarily. I will reiterate, you're sick fox. But they're children? I feel like there's something wrong with killing children. Um. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone has to die sometime. But yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, it seems you're already down one. Um, we'll see if good old Cliff shows up again or not. But for the moment, good job not falling for any traps. I did warn him. Hmm. Well, I say let's go right. Um, well, that seems as good as the direction as any, I guess. Okay. Uh, let's hop back over to Cliff. Um, so yeah, anytime you say anything, it just gets echoed back through that speaker. Um, what would you like to do about your current predicament? Uh, I think first thing, uh, how high up is the speaker? Uh, it seems to be up in the very, very corner, so it's about nine feet uh, above the floor. Nine feet. Um, so if I jumped up with arms outstretched, I might be able to grab it? Uh, potentially, yeah. Okay, I would like to try to rip it off the wall. Okay, uh, I will need a might roll. Alrighty. Let's get that roll going. Uh, might... Ooh, I've got stuff in might. Oh, don't have enough in might. So a nine. Uh, so you, you leap up and uh, you're able to just barely touch the edge of it with your fingertips. Um, but uh, yeah, you didn't quite quite reach it. Hmm. Um, you could potentially try again. Uh, there's nothing particularly pressing at the moment that would require you to hurry. Yeah. If you want to take some extra time to, yeah, to grab I'll, it. Yeah, I'll try to, to get it off again. Okay. Just, I guess, looking kind of ridiculous in case anyone steps in to see. Oh, goodness. <laughs> goodness, goodness. Uh, I'm starting to feel a little ridiculous uh, at this stupid box. Um. Yeah, actually, the second time that you try... Uh, there's like an old sitcom laugh track that plays on the speaker. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick the wall and then hop around for a second, um, uh, hoping I didn't break <laughs> that too. Uh, there's no door leading back out, is there? There is a door. Uh, it has a small window with, that's barred, uh, but there doesn't appear to be a door handle. Just at a glance. I'm gonna go try to open the door. Okay. Um, how would you like to attempt to open the door? Uh, I'm gonna try to kick it open. Okay. Uh, that'll be another mic roll. Ooh, another nine, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, there we go. Nat 20! Nice! Um, so, with uh, that being a nat 20, that's gonna bump you up to a 34. Um, which, uh, these are heavy metal doors designed to keep people mm -hmm. in. Um, so it's not going to qu quite going to be enough to kick it wide open. Mm -hmm. However, uh, you do severely bend it. Um, it's bent up enough that you could probably reach an arm out and, uh, maybe grab at, uh, the door handle. Oh, there's door handle on the, on the other side. Yeah, well, if that's the case, then I'll, I'll, I'll reach around, kind of flailing blindly, and uh, try to open the door from the outside. Okay. Uh, as you reach out, um, you first feel the door handle, mm -hmm. and then you feel a hand on your forearm that is icy cold no. uh, and clammy. Oh, no. And it just gently grabs your forearm and then lets go. Doesn't try to move my hand? 
Nope. That's uh, all right. It just this thing's already showing feels... that it's 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 all talk. It's not actually, it's it's not actually here to. Uh, it can't actually influence this world if it wasn't willing to have a conversation with me. So I'm gonna open the door anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, such a gentle touch. Um, it gently caresses your forearm. <laughs> uh, the door opens, and uh, at that point, everybody else, you hear a door opening from the left end of the hallway. A very squeaky hinge door opening sound. And can I roll hearing to see if I know what direction that came from? Uh, you can, uh, though you you already know it's coming from the left. Okay. Uh, but a hearing roll would would potentially give you more information. Yes, that would be nice. Um. All right, that is <laughs> creepily caressing. Twenty-two. Your forehead, yeah. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um. So you, in addition to the creaking hinge, um, you can hear what sounds like somebody of, of Cliff's size and build sort of stomping out of the, the small room, and uh, it, it's a good bet that it's Cliff. Oh, okay, so he's still alive, I think. Oh. <laughs> well, oh. only one of us can win, so we're not going to wait for him. Definitely um, not. He's probably in on it anyway. You know, you know, I think that the best thing to do is to work together at least until we know what's going on. The chances of survival are usually better when you move in uh, groups. That's how I traveled so you know maybe it's a good idea to see if he's okay the rest well, you of can you go are... find him um but i'm gonna keep going i maybe um, i'm out don't don't care what happened to him he fucked up that's his problem oh my g- goodness okay. children these days <laughs> Some people's kids. Um, so Bella, Donald, and Nora, it sounds like you're going right down mm-hmm. the hallway. Mm-hmm. And Nana will go check on Cliff. Okay. Splitting the party. Fantastic. Uh, so Nana, uh, you're able to catch up with Cliff very quickly. Um, it's a darker part of the hallway. It's a little more spooky and creepy. Um and it's a little colder. Uh, let me have you roll. Um, let's do gut feeling for this one. Who's really gut feeling? Uh, you. Oh, <laughs> I'm here waiting for somebody else. <laughs> I'm not used to being Nana. Okay. <laughs> All right. Gut feeling. Okay. That is a 21. New one. Okay. As you approach Cliff, uh, your spidey senses start to tingle, uh, so to speak. Um, you feel imminent danger, um, though you couldn't really tell why or where, or how, all the, you know, basic questions. You just know that something dangerous is nearby, and it's giving you a really bad feeling. It's not coming from Cliff. Uh, I will give you that much. Um, So, um... What do you do? Well, I'm going to hurry over to Cliff, um, stand by him, and then go, fuck off! And uh, cast... A circle of fire around me. Okay. Uh, roll magic engineering. <laughs> it's berserker. Her berserker trait coming out. Then. <laughs> All right. So magic, magic engineering. 
Um, I love that we're not even an hour into the game and somebody's already essentially done the, I cast fireball. Yeah. <laughs> That's 23, fam. 23? Okay. Um, it, it's, it's a somewhat impressive circle of fire. Um, it's only about knee height, um, but it is rather hot, um, enough so that it does produce uh, quite a bit of light. You're able to see the hallway, and then it's it's very dingy. Um, there's uh, bits of paper and leaves and tattered fabric and things uh, all over the floor. Um, various asylum uh, equipment that you, you would expect to see. So, uh, you know, maybe a wheelchair here uh, and there. Um, some sort of uh, medical tray uh, that's sort of toppled over. Um, a lot of just little details like that. And at the very edge of the light, you see uh, something very similar to what uh, Cliff saw. A, a not quite two-dimensional shadow. Uh, creeping back along the wall. Yep, that's uh, not a good thing. That, that there, that there's what we call a motherfucker! <laughs> uh, no, there's, there's, uh, there's no need to worry. Um, I, I appreciate your, uh, your, your enthusiasm, but I had a conversation with that individual over there, and uh, they, they're they're just here to, to be a nuisance. They're not actually going to cause us any harm. What the fuck is wrong with you? You literally got yourself trapped in a fucking room with that asshole. Man, I got how out. About I, how about you listen to me for once and that don't follow the shadow creatures from now on, okay? Hey, my, my, my plan worked out perfectly. I had a conversation. It went perfectly civilly. It turns out... You had a conversation with jack shit. Can Sorry. I can I can I roll speech to uh, try to persuade her that I did actually have a conversation with someone in there? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing oh, at my shit. own character. That's not amazing. <laughs> a sixteen. Uh, a sixteen's enough that that uh, you seem sincere. Uh, you're you're not really trying to tell. Uh, compared to all the other things that you're seeing, um, saying that you had a conversation with the shadow is not that outlandish. Um, so, Rohan, uh, it's up to you. Uh, you can believe that or not believe it, but Cliff does seem pretty sincere. How about we don't have conversations with shadows from now on, okay? I mean, that's a fair rule. I, I, I'm just saying that my particular, uh, what, what I did was not a bad idea. I think it was a bad idea. Well, we'll just have to agree to disagree then, won't we, little Missy? I was the one who didn't get trapped in a fucking room, okay? I didn't get trapped. Oh I got out. Let's agree On to that disagree. note, <laughs> let's hop over to, to Bella, Donal, and uh, Nora. You hear some yelling and swearing coming from the hallway, albeit faintly. Um, but uh, as you make your way down the other side of the hallway, uh, you can see more and more natural light coming in from ahead of you. Um, and uh, uh, you don't notice any windows. You don't see the source of this light, but it does seem to get brighter the further out you go. Um, is there anything in particular that you would like to look for uh, or inspect? Um, what are you thinking as you're walking down this hallway? It, what are, like, is there metal, like, is any of the structure holding up anything metal? Um, I was going to ask the same question. You don't, <laughs> you don't really see do any metal in the structure. Um, it's it's mostly just a hallway. There's some, some door frames um, that uh, look like they're mostly wood. Um, most of the, the really sturdy metal stuff was back the other way. Um, this seems to be more of like offices, so they're not quite as secured. Um, you could potentially roll magic engineering to try and sense any metal in the structure. There could be some uh, inside the walls. Okay. What is with these rolls? Okay. <laughs> 
So at 12, uh, you, uh, you you sense magic. Uh, use your magic, magic to try to sense metal. Um, but uh, all you get is like the, the little alphabet letters that you put on the fridge. Like that level of magnetism off your uh, off of you. And you're not able to sense anything. Can I try the same thing? Uh, yes, you can. Sixteen. I'm assuming you both took you both took metal magic. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the section of the building that you're in is still using mostly cinder blocks for the walls. Uh, however, they are reinforced with rebar, so there is metal inside the walls. There's no like trays or anything around anywhere oh yeah there's there's things like that um if you're looking for just metal objects that are lying around uh there's uh old medical trays that have been tipped over um there's uh not like any scalpels or anything like that there's probably some surgical instruments like maybe uh um forceps or or whatever can i use one of those trays um, to make a hoverboard little bits you can certainly try. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll magic engineering again. Damn it. <laughs> eight. <laughs> <laughs> eight. Oh my god, Zan. Zan in chat just said, for a party with so many metal magicians, we certainly don't seem to be alloys. Uh -huh. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um... So describe for me what you were trying to do. Like, uh, what did you envision you, yourself doing with this this tray? Basically, standing on it and hover, making it hover, like one of those obnoxious hoverboards that kids have nowadays, except an actual hoverboard. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you were going to stand on it and then have it yeah. hover. Okay. In that case, you just stand on it, um, and nothing happens. Aww. Don't call the coppers on you. <laughs> the metal puns. Uh, I love it. Uh, so yeah, nothing happens. You just stand on this tray. Bummer. Um, is Nora doing anything? Uh, what, describe the room again. Uh, you're in a cinder block hallway. Uh, there are some offices, um, mostly on the left hand side as you're you're walking down the hallway. Uh, the wall to the right hand side doesn't seem to have any windows or anything along it. Uh, there's no doorways or anything. It seems to be just one long wall, um, which could indicate something. It might not. Um, you could try to figure that out. Um, mm -hmm. There's a bunch of debris on the floor. Uh, and the further down the hallway you go, the more natural and fluorescent light seems to be present, though you still cannot see the source for it. Now, can I roll insight, or I've got feeling or whatever? Uh, yeah, you could roll, um, you could roll gut feeling if you're trying to fill out the situation. You could roll education if you're curious about something specific about the building. Um... Yeah, education. What exactly is it that you're Try, you're trying to figure out? Trying to logic uh, natural light meaning outside. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me an education roll. Oh, nice. So that is a 19... Uh, a 19 on education and you're specifically wondering uh, what's the source of the natural light mm -hmm. uh, from best as you can tell um, there potentially could be uh, maybe some skylights up ahead uh, that could be where some of those natural lights coming from uh, or some windows um, it also does seem a little bit odd that it's getting so much brighter um, given that uh, you can't see any windows currently. Um, so the light seems to not be following uh, you know, the rules of nature uh, in regards to what you're seeing in the building. 
Awesome, it's a fun house. This way. Okay. I'm walking in that direction. So you can... Okay, so you're all continuing down the hallway towards... You're, uh, you're going towards the light and the tunnel, um, so to speak. Uh, let's hop back over to Nana and Cliff. Now, you listen, we're going to go find those children and make sure that they're okay, okay? <laughs> of course, I mean, that's what I was going to do anyway. I'm glad you're along for the ride. Let's make one thing, one thing clear right now. I'm the one who knows how to survive around here, so why don't you shut up? Oh. Okay, Pumpkin? Oh, Little Miss Palsy Bridges. I, uh, I think you and I might have a problem in the future. I'm the one who's going to keep us fucking alive. How about that? Does that sound like a problem to you? Well, we'll see about that. Wait, okay, let's go. Uh, okay. Uh, do you dispel your, your fire ring? Um, she dispels it probably uh, uh, in front of them, but not where the shadow was. Can okay, I, so like, you kind of convert it? it into a fire wall, <laughs> fire wall. so to speak. Uh, okay, cool. It's like a firewall. Uh, so... That's like with those computers, how they kept the um, the bad things out. Get it? I was, about, I was about to say, uh, so you cast McAfee <laughs> and keep walking. <laughs> cast McAfee. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, you keep the firewall going there. Um, and you're going down the hallway back from where you came, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Um, as you walk away, I would like both of you to roll, uh, either gut feeling or sight. Okay. All right. That is for gut feeling. I rolled a 19 plus a, 12. Okay. I have a 15 total for gut feeling. How about a. Okay. Whoa! 31? How does that. How? How? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, oh! I have three points in it plus five uh, bonus because of my uh, strength plus four spiritual. So that's he, plus 12. You strength in your, uh, what? Uh, plus four, I plus three, plus five. It added up to 12. <laughs> hold on a sec. <laughs> hold, hold on a sec. <laughs> it's like strength doesn't go into gut feeling. Let me just double check what's, uh, what's going on in your case okay. here. Uh... For gut feeling. So, yeah, you got spiritual. Uh, oh, you've got alert. That's why. Yes. Um, okay, that makes sense. I'm with it. I'm with you now. Um, Regardless, I get a 31. Yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, so with a 15, Zan, uh, you just get... Uh, Cliff gets this sort of bad feeling, like the, the hair standing up on the back of their neck. Um, kind of uh, something bad's about to happen sort of feeling. Uh, whereas Nana, um, you, uh, you feel literally like you're in a horror movie. Uh, you feel like something is watching you from above you and like just the sense that, um, darkness has, uh, tangible properties and is about to fall on you. Um, and you get the sense that either you really should look behind you or you really shouldn't look behind you. Uh, and either way, it's probably a good idea to get out of there. So, uh, <laughs> Cliff is going to die out of pure spite. <laughs> Just saw that in chat. Uh, this seems, uh, this seems a little foreboding. We say we, uh, we say we, 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 uh, exit stage left. Oh, dust allergies, man. This place uh, could really use a little bit of a cleaning. Yes, 
I I think so too. Uh, that's so, a good idea. You should uh, you should speak quietly so uh, whatever else is in here doesn't hear you. Excellent idea. Let's go. <laughs> uh, as you start to move, you hear uh, you know that sound uh, when you have bare feet and they're like wet or maybe even a little bit muddy, and you slap your foot onto to concrete. Uh, you hear that, but a little bit louder, and it just sounds a little bit off. Um, and after a second, you realize the reason it sounds off is that it's coming from above you. Um, hmm. So, uh, can I cast magic above us? Can I cast a fireball above us? Uh, you sure can, if you would like to look at what's above you. Uh, what did my gut feeling tell me? You don't... Uh, your gut feeling told you that it was either, um... Th that there was something dangerous, uh, and you either, uh... should look at what's there to see what's what's dangerous, or you got the sense that that might also be a bad idea, um, because then you might get freaked out by what's behind you. Um, it's sort of like, do you look under the bed when you hear a noise, or do you ignore it? I'm gonna look at it. And just leave the I'm room. I'm gonna look at it. Um, and cast Fireball okay. at uh, Whatever it is. Okay. Uh, we had four plot points redeemed uh, by a village system. Uh, so Cliff's nerves are getting the better of him. Curse uh, to the next roll. So what we'll do with that, uh, Cliff, next time you need something really bad, it's not gonna be there. <laughs> All right. All right. So you've got a curse on you. Nice. Um, You're welcome. I'll, I'll let you know when that happens. Uh, so, Nana, as you turn around to look up, you see not one of those shadowy figures, uh, but about a dozen of them, and they are slapping their hands as they're crawling along the ceiling, um, and they're all staring at you. Roll discipline to... Uh, keep your sanity about you as you stare at this horror movie monstrosity. All right. Sanity, you said. So. Uh, yeah. So mental. Moral discipline. Discipline. Okay. Uh, all right. That is a 21. 21. Okay. Um, you're pretty freaked out. It's not enough that you feel, um, like you're going to be shaken up for a long time about it, so you don't get an insanity point. Um, but you feel like you were pretty close to it. Um, it's enough to really freak you out, though, and uh, your adrenaline starts pumping, so if you want to run out of there, you can roll nimbleness with a plus five. Um... Uh, or or you can try to blast it with a fireball, uh, like you originally planned. I think, that is an option I think well. it's a fight or flight type thing, and she has a tendency to fight and then fly. So, you know, okay. get rid of the threat first and then run. Right? Uh, all right. Fair enough. Or at least slow uh, it down. Then roll magic engineering. And uh, let's see what you do. <laughs> I rolled a two. Oh yeah. At least it wasn't an at one. Nine. <laughs> Nine. So you go to cast fireball at this uh just you know, pitch black, shadowy, gnarly hand looking figure. It's even doing like the stop motion jerking uh sort of action with its movements. Um it, it's super, super creepy, and you go to blast it with a fireball, uh, you know, potentially clearing it out of the way and what happens is um your thumb acts like a lighter um instead of a fireball you have like a, literally a lighter sized flame coming off of your thumb and that's it oh fuck it and she grabs uh <laughs> wait hold on you're gonna say something else uh yes there is more okay okay <laughs> but wait there's more okay i just heard that uh, <laughs> being very unimpressed with your display of fire uh, 
two of those shadowy things drop down to the floor with a loud, wet splat noise and start slowly slapping their wet sounding hands against the concrete, crawling towards you. God, I hate this um, so much. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, what For the city fucking that's... Christ is that? <laughs> For something that's crawling towards you, it's moving surprisingly fast. Uh, Cliff, uh, we're going to pause with Nana there and go to Cliff. Cliff, uh, so you just watched Nana try to blast the thing and obviously whatever it was didn't work uh, out. It's um, least, yeah. You've now seen them, so we do need a discipline roll from you. Alrighty. Uh, six. Um, so that's gonna be another, uh, insanity point. Alright, so I'm at two out of five. So, um, what happens here is, uh, you turn around and look at them, and instead of just, you know, the, the super creepy stop-action jerky motion uh, shadows, uh, it, like, forms a mouth that opens up, and it's just rows of these, like, pure white, jagged, um, spiky looking teeth and a mouth that's way bigger than it should be for something that size it takes up like half of its head um and it, it opens it up and it starts crawling towards you a little bit faster and you're really 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 freaked out um and uh because you failed the sanity roll um you're you're frozen like a deer in headlights S sir 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 <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Can Nana grab Cliff and then run? Yes, you can. Uh, go ahead and... Uh, I'm not going to make you roll might or anything. Just do the nimbleness roll and you'll still get the plus five. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> okay, so plus five. That is a, a dirty 20 plus uh, nimbleness. Which is... Five. So 25. 25. Uh, yeah, that's going to be just enough. Uh, you grab Cliff's arm and hightail it out of there. And uh, you notice once you get to the lighter part of the hallway, um, it stops following you. And it seems to slowly turn around. And it's doing that whole glitchy stop action motion type deal still as it slowly turns around and slaps against the concrete over and over again as it crawls away. <laughs> uh, with that, Nora, Bella, and Donald, um, what are you doing? Yeah, let's, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, where, um, what does the room look like? Now that we're, now that we're uh, still still the same. Uh, you haven't really progressed much further. Um, it's it's still that hallway. There's debris everywhere. There's one wall without any windows or doors or anything to your right. There's a bunch of offices to your left. There's light coming from down the hallway. Yeah. Um, so do you want to inspect the offices? Do you want to keep running down the hallway? Try to find the light source. Yeah. Um, do you want to inspect anything? Source, okay. Um, uh, muted, Lisa. I'm gonna look in the offices. Okay. Uh, the party go again. ahead and roll sight. And I have alert, so I'm gonna add that to sight. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Cool. 18 plus 5, so 23. 23? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you poke your head in one of the offices. Um, most of the, the papers and things like that in there are pretty illegible. Uh, most of the inks just, uh, you know, it wasn't like archived, uh, archival paper or ink or anything like that. So it's just, you can see scratch marks where there was something written, probably with a ballpoint pen. Um, but the ink's gone. Um, there's not a whole lot of value in there. Uh, except you do find uh, a scalpel um, that's been decently preserved. It's not razor sharp like it would normally be, but it's still a sharp knife, and it's not rusty or anything. 
I'm taking it because I'm a klepto. Okay. Uh, that'll be a D6 uh, weapon, by the way. Cool. Uh, melee weapon. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about all you find there. Uh, what's Bella doing? So Bella um, would be collecting like the other medical instruments that they were finding along the way. Okay. Um, God, and we then got she... two klepto's. Yep. <laughs> yes. And then she also would, um, I rolled for it. She didn't get it, but she'd still be searching for like to see if she could find any foundational things that were metal that she could mess with. Um, I don't know if she'd have been exposed to any like construction knowledge that she would know that it would be supported by rebar or not. Possibly. Uh, you could try an education roll to see. Okay, and then with all recalls, I get a plus five. So that's 16. Uh, yeah, that will do that. Um, so 16 to recall. Um, you have a vague recollection of uh, cinder block buildings being more than just the blocks. Um, you kind of remember something about uh, they used to use something to uh, to make sure it didn't fall over. Uh, maybe it was metal. You're not quite sure what it was that they reinforced it with, but um, I mean, with as heavy as cinder blocks are, it makes sense that it'd probably be something metal. Okay, so let's see. She's going to try. Hoo-hoo, 19. So she's going to try to pull at the metal that might be there in the walls to shut off the hallway between them and uh, Cliff and Nana. Ooh, interesting. Um, okay. Uh, with the 19, uh, the, the room starts to shake and you definitely hear some creaking noises. Um, you you get the sense that something above you is about to break <clears throat> and that you're not quite sure uh if you keep this up you're not quite sure what's gonna fall where you're pretty confident you could block off the hallway but you might drop something on your head in the process hmm. but you're not sure it could be fine worth the risk okay go ahead and roll magic engineering again uh, and where are you in relation to Nora and uh, Donal? So she would still be in the hallway. Um, a little bit behind them. I think. Uh, okay. So if you do pull this down, it's, it's not going to uh, block them off, just Nana and Cliff. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and try magic engineering. Let's see what happens. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay. <laughs> uh, the dice hate me. It's fine. Yeah. So I've got some good news, bad news for you. Uh, which would you like first? Good news. Good news is you accomplish what you're trying to do. You block off the hallway. Yeah. Bad news, you do it on top of your head. Um, Oof. So, uh, if you would like, you can roll nimbleness to sort of mitigate this disaster. Yes, I will try nimbleness. <laughs> Are you kidding um, me? What the heck? Oh Why do the dice hate me? <sighs> okay. Um, so, am I dead? <laughs> Have I killed myself? So... <laughs> <laughs> how many hit points do you have? <laughs> um, I don't know. How many hit points do I have? The feeling uh, 15. How many hit points you have? Ouch. <laughs> Just gave myself a paper cut. Uh, how many? 15. <laughs> 15? Yes. Um, okay, we're going to say this, because um, it's only halfway through this one shot. You're at zero hit points. Uh, unconscious, buried under rubble, but you're not dead yet. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. 
<laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, the the ceiling collapses, um, and there's like, uh, you know, in addition to the normal debris, there's like a filing cabinet that falls on top of you, a literal clawfoot bathtub, uh, and uh, a bunch of various debris, uh, bricks and things like that. Uh, Donal and Nora, you absolutely hear and see this happen. Uh, you see Bella just doing something, uh, and then the ceiling just caving in on top of her. Um, Nana and Cliff, you absolutely hear this further down the hallway, this large crash, and, um, uh, then there is a crackle on the speakers, and you hear Xander. And Xander just very calmly goes, Ah, uh, well, I had such high hopes for that one. But, um, apparently she wasn't as smart as she thought. Um, I mean... <laughs> ah, that I sounded, uh, that sounded like a loud noise. But yeah. Would you rather go back that way? I'm gonna keep going this way. Uh, I, uh, I don't want to go near that loud noise. Um... Go back to the shadows and fucking perish. What the the what? The shadows. I, 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 the no, monsters. I'm sorry. That I, I, I I don't recall that I had a gentleman's agreement with uh, with one of those shadowy fellows, and they uh, they assured me they would be leaving me alone. I was uh, I was just about to give them a piece of my mind when you uh, when would you you? Me away. <clears throat> and uh, would you bet your life on that? Huh? I think we should go this way. Towards Come the loud on. noise. Yes, it's also where the light is. It's generally safer there. So, uh, you know, ninety percent of rowing. crimes happen in the dark. Legitimate question: uh, Is Nana possessed? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just checking. Just like the. <laughs> The speed at which she changes from like quiet to like, I'll eat your soul. Uh, just you know. She's, just, okay, so listen. It, more, it begs the question. <laughs> she, she's uh, kind of pissed at Cliff because she's picked up on the condescending vibes and he, she's not putting up with it. These are the kind of people that get <laughs> people like her killed over their own self selfishness. So. Okay. okay. Just, <laughs> just checking. She's fine. Just checking. Okay. I so, think, no, um, well, the, the definition of fine, she's uh, something else, but you know. Relatively. Gotcha. Uh, so, Cliff, uh, you're not going towards the noise. Um, no, uh, Nana correct. is pulling Cliff towards the noise. Uh, he will allow. Oh, okay. He will allow himself to be drugged, but is protesting heartily. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, about, you both I, I reach. Heard drug instead of drug. No, 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 no. Like, oh. Listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. Look, look Cliff is an asshole. Cliff is not that her. kind of asshole. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, all right. Things so. In this game. Uh, yeah. So no, no one's getting drugged. <laughs> Yet. Yet. You reach the source of the noise <laughs> and you see that the hallway is blocked off because the ceiling has collapsed. Um, however, uh, there is now a way for you to potentially get up to the second floor um, because the floor has collapsed downwards. Uh, so the hallway is completely blocked off, but you could climb up the rubble potentially to get to the, uh, the second floor if you wanted to. Um, we're going to pause there, and real quick, uh, uh, Donal and Nora, what do you do in response to the ceiling just collapsed on top of Bella? Sucks to suck. Yeah, it really does. Nobody's going to say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, if Nana saw Bella, Nana would help save, save Bella. It's fine. Bella wouldn't have saved um, you guys either. 
<laughs> That's what I figured. <laughs> hey, Mom. Um, tell you what. I thought that was something in was game, adorable. and I was absolutely terrified. I was like, are those Bella's last words? <laughs> what, what is this? I almost shat myself. I'm sorry. Holy yeah, God. that's my four-year-old. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. I Let's I take it. Let's take it. <laughs> you scared one of the players, so... sweetie? <laughs> So Bella, uh, do do a, a might roll. Let, let's see if you have, you know, just this last little bit of strength that you can make some noise. Maybe Nana can know that you're there. <laughs> okay, but I also, I'm also not sure if she would be able to lower her pride enough, even on the verge of death, to ask Nana for help. <laughs> I was thinking more of like, you know, groaning. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> or going out. Well, I have absolutely no bonuses. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> when I so a fifteen. <laughs> now I roll something higher than a one. <laughs> so Nana, let me have you roll hearing. And we'll see if uh, maybe we can save Bella. Well, it ha just so happens I have bonuses in hearing, so I got um, 21. 21. All right, so a 21 and a 15 from Bella. That sounds like something that we can find out after a break what happens. Dun, dun, dun! The timing on that music! Holy crap! That was amazing! Uh, so yeah, we're gonna take a break. Uh, go stretch your legs, uh, hydrate, all that good stuff. Uh, but we'll be back in about 10 minutes and we'll find out if Nana is able to hear Bella uh, underneath all of that rubble. So, uh, so yeah. uh, see you in 10 minutes.
and we are back. So, Nana, you hear the faintest of sounds coming from underneath the rubble. Uh, the rubble seems to move slightly. You hear what might be a human uh, noise, <clears throat> almost like a whimper, um, but it's very faint. What do you do? Oh dear. Um, I'm going to see if I can... Well, one, uh, she's like, Cliff, I think, I think there's one of the children under here. Uh, no, I, I don't hear anything, unfortunately. Listen up, you're gonna help. As she starts um, pulling Rubble up. <clears throat> Cliff's gonna go upstairs. Or up, up Rubble's. Can I uh, put okay, fire in his path? And... Uh, you can certainly try. <clears throat> uh, okay. Just a question. How do we regain <gasps> bonus action? Nat 20. Uh, you get bonus action points. Uh, they automatically refill at the end of every encounter. Okay. So as soon as you're out of combat, you get all of them back. Okay. Uh, so I got Nat 20 on that fire blocking uh, Cliff's path. Uh, okay. So, yeah, Cliff, uh, you go to climb up and suddenly there's a, a wall of fire uh, blocking your path. Uh, and I assume this wall of fire is on the debris pile? Uh, or, like, above it? Can I do it, like, a little above it? Um, so you want it to, like, levitate? I did that, or just put in, it on in, the floor above. Just along that hole. Uh, sure, you can create a fire hole. <laughs> fire in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so Cliff, um, you can climb the rubble, but, but the, uh, the floor just inside the second floor has fire look, on it. Look, 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 this Um, I hate to be the one to tell you this. Help me, please. I, I hate to be the one to tell you this, Missy, but, um... Help me, please! Uh, uh, the, the voice said that there's only gonna be, uh, there's only gonna be two of us getting out of here. And, help uh, me, please! I you, uh, adding a third you person... You are going to help me, and then we can go upstairs I'm and figure going this to do, out. I'm going to do no such thing, because that person is already dead if they're under the rubble. We don't know who it is. It might be another one of those creepy shadow fucks. I don't have to do anything that you tell me to do. Look, it's a little hand. There's a little hand. Of a child. It's a child's hand. And it's wiggling slightly. You see those fingers? No. Those digits. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can count each one for you. One, two, three, four. Fucking help me, bitch. And then we can keep going upstairs. Oh, uh, what what would we have would we have had what was in our pockets when we uh left our um our our daily lives to be in here? Uh potentially. Um uh, uh I mean you were all kind of had all of your things uh, taken away, but it's possible something might still be in your pocket. Um, what are what are you thinking? Uh, I think uh, Cliff has a pack of cigarettes in his sock. Uh, yeah, we'll say they that whoever it was that took your stuff away missed that. Right. So Cliff is just going to use the firewall and light up a smoke and sit down. <laughs> okay. Well, at least we're. At least, like, this is a happy medium, because at least they are staying in a group, relatively. But yeah, no, she's going to try to help this child. A uh, voice comes in over the intercom, addressing you, Cliff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's Xander, of course, and he goes, You know, Cliff, if you just killed the firebug, the fire would go away and you could go upstairs. Um, so what, what exactly is this first prize? <laughs> Oh, it's a very special prize. See, the winner 
gets immeasurable power. And wealth. So, for my mind... Power is really more important, but there's also lots of wealth. And immortality. I got I got a 21 on my might, by the way. To move this rubble. Uh, okay. Um, you get some of it moved away. Uh, you can see that, uh... Uh... Bella is indeed buried under the rubble and unconscious and barely alive. Oh dear. Let's see. Uh, can I pull her out? What would it take? Uh, you can try to pull her out if you would like. She's still half buried under the rubble and there's a lot of heavy things on top of her. Um, so it's, it's up to you if you want to try to pull her out. It would be a might roll. Mm. Uh, or if you want to try something else. Um, it's up to you. Um, Mr. Sir? See, it is the child that they're still alive. Can you just at least do something to help? Just and, a uh, little bit? There, there's, there's only going to be two of us getting out of here. Uh, are you going to be the one to kill her when we get to the final plot, when we get to the door? We'll, we'll pass that bridge when we come to it. Uh, but... No, I, I think it's a lot easier to make to let these decisions be made for us. And uh, it looks like the rocks did a damn good job of deciding that one. Well, she isn't dead yet. Are you really suggesting that you're going to be the one to kill her like this? I'm not suggesting I do anything. I'm Innocent suggesting the exact blood. opposite. I'm I'm suggesting that I do nothing. Crime of doing nothing is as bad as doing it yourself. I'm gonna have to disagree with you there, Pumpkin. Listen, I'm the only one who's able to uh, gonna call anyone Pumpkin around here. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Nana. Then so, uh, it continues moving rubble, I guess. Or at least. Uh, okay. Um, so I was going to say one thing. Uh, when Nana is talking about, like, are, are you going to be the one to, uh, you know, to kill her? Uh, the speakers do chime in and you just hear, do it, do it, do it, do it. Over and over again. Um... Okay, so you want to try to remove more rubble. Would you like to um, uh, do it in any sp special kind of way, or are you just trying to pull it off as fast as possible? Um, I'm trying to just get her free enough that I can just pull her out and pull her out quickly. Uh, okay, uh, go ahead and make a might roll. Okay. Uh, that is an 18. An 18? Uh, I am not yeah, strong. You, get the, uh, <laughs> you manage to, like, push the clawfoot tub over, and it just, like, rolls down the pile of debris with a loud clatter. Uh, Donal and Nora, you definitely can hear the, the clatter and the, the digging sounds coming from the other side of the debris wall. Um, do you want to do anything, or are you still booking it out of there? Nora's getting the fucky out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Donald's just gonna walk away. All right then. Uh, uh, so while she... Nana, as you, uh... oh sorry. Yeah, while she's digging, um, I want to uh, casually, uh, very nonchalantly, look through some of the rubble and see if there's um, uh, any. Uh, you mentioned that there was a tub, so there might be some piping, or. Uh, just a good palm-sized rock. Um, yeah, you find a a, a good like forearms uh, length-sized uh, lead pipe. Oh, okay. I'm gonna hold on to that. Okay, <clears throat> that's gonna be a one-handed one d eight melee weapon. Okay. Uh. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Nana, you're able to uh, get enough debris off of Bella to pull her out. Um, 
she is literally dying at this point. So if you're not able to uh, stabilize her, uh, then she's going to die. So I roll medicine. Uh, okay. Uh, that is a 17. 17? Yes. Um, is Cliff going to help by chance? Uh, Cliff's just, uh, poking at the rubble with a pipe. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's not gonna be enough. Um, I'm gonna say you could have one more try at medicine, um, to try and, and patch it up. It's gonna be harder though, but sure, Bella's sure. bleeding out at this point. I will try. Uh, well, I mean, that's better. It's 21. 21? Uh, I'll, I'll say that you get Bella stabilized, but yeah, she's not regaining consciousness uh, anytime soon without some stronger medicine. Uh, and it's like, well, uh, We'll see what we can find. I mean, it's kind of a hospital, I guess. Uh, and she banishes the fire above so that they can climb. As soon as the fire's gone, Cliff's going to uh, stomp the butt of a cigarette and uh, walk up and go, yeah, all right, well, uh, you enjoy lugging around that dead weight. You carry it. No. I, I think I think you should carry it. Oh, I'm I think, sorry. I There's think... another like click of a microphone coming on. You know, killing her is still an option. Just saying, Cliff. Um, you know, it's on the table. <laughs> click. <laughs> I honestly think that. You maybe should carry it if you don't want. Don't like the sound of barbecue. Turn around and walk away. Okay. With that, we're going to go over to Nora and Donal. Uh, you've proceeded down the hallway. Um, you hear some commotion coming from behind you, um, but you've chosen to ignore it. Uh, as you go further down the hallway, uh, you notice that there are... Um, uh, uh, s some windows uh, along the right hand wall um, they're barred up they have shutters over them uh, and the sunlight that's coming through is just through little cracks in the shutters um, and when I say shutters they're not like nice fancy ones we're talking like uh, a bunch of 2 by 4s that have been nailed together uh, to cover up the window um, so uh, you do see that and that's where that natural light's coming from. You also see some fluorescent lights that are uh, hanging overhead. Uh, most of the bulbs are burnt out. Some of them are, are on and they're flickering, um, but they're not bringing in a whole lot of uh, light. Um, and uh, you see the hallway finally uh, starts to branch off. Uh, now there's a fork, one direction that goes to the left, one direction that goes to the, to the right, sort of at a, an angle. Uh, so if you were looking at the hallway overhead, uh, it basically looked like a big Y. Okay. Um, the left fork, you notice uh, a lot more doors along the wall. Uh, the right fork doesn't seem to have any doors, it's just a hallway that leads somewhere. So skylight, left ward, right ward, out? Um... Sorry, what? Uh, there's the place we came from, left ward, right ward, but mm -hmm. in front. Uh, so you've got uh, essentially some, some boarded up windows to your right. Uh, and then you've got a hallway that goes to the right uh, at a diagonal. And that just seems to be a hallway that goes somewhere that you don't notice any doors or windows. Uh, and a hallway that goes to the left, and there are a lot more doors along the wall that way. Time to start breaking some boards on windows. Uh, okay, you want to try to break the boards on the windows. Mm -hmm. How would you like to do that? Uh, just brute force, I guess. 
Uh, so are you gonna like kick it or punch it or uh... like like just you know leverage leverage with my leg pull. <laughs> okay, okay, I gotcha. Try not to kind of pull it apart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's do a, do a might roll. Let's see how you do. Get ready for a love roll. A fifteen. Oh. Oh no! I'm sorry, that was. That was a nat twenty. I, did, I was not expecting that. What the hell? So nat twenty would be okay. thirty two. Because I have two in mind. Thirty two. Uh, you managed to break off a decent chunk of of board. Um, it's a uh, uh, much like Cliff's lead pipe. It's about uh, the size of a, a human forearm, uh, and it splinters off at one end. So it's it's nice and sharp and pointy uh, on one end. So you could essentially use it as a bludgeoning tool or a a stabby tool. Uh, on average, it does about D eight damage either way. Um, and you can see outside. Uh, outside looks nice and peaceful and serene. There's a forest out there. Um, it looks like it's probably uh, mid to late autumn. Um, most of the trees are evergreens, um, like pine trees, but you do see some oaks that have uh, you know, still some changed color leaves uh, on their, their branches, but most of them are just brown and dead and on the ground. I'm done with this fucking game. Uh, make, I'm gonna make a portal to the forest. Okay. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll magic engineering if you're sure that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay. Yeah, uh, so that's 12 plus 7 is 19. <laughs> Zan gets it. <laughs> so 19 total? Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Uh, as you go to throw a gate outside uh, into the forest, uh, it seems to hit the air uh, not very far away from the window. Um, and instead of it opening a portal that you can step through, um, your mind is just flooded with, uh, it's like watching a time-lapse camera of a thousand years in the span of, uh, a few seconds. Uh, it's a lot of information and you see a lot of, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll just put the, the veiled statement of awful asylum things that happen uh, a long time ago. Oh. Uh, it's pretty disturbing. Uh, go ahead and roll... Um, uh, thank you. I kept wanting to say destiny. I'm like, it's not destiny. <laughs> discipline. What, what, what roll is, discipline what to determine your destiny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, great. Ten total. Yeah. It's... It, it's... Uh, it's not happy fun time. No, it's not. Um, you definitely uh, are affected by this. Um, and so you'll take an insanity point. And um, yeah, you, you're pretty shaken up by it. You're uh, very clear that that is not going to be uh, a way that you can escape uh, by using a gate there. There seems to be some sort of problem uh, with time. Uh, centered around these windows. Um, oh my. Now, on the plus side, you do get some information. Uh, so through this, you can figure out that um, uh, there's definitely something wrong with the asylum. It's not just like, ooh, it's spooky haunted. Um, there seems to be some sort of temporal anomaly that's happening here. Um, so while you do take a point of insanity, um, you do get a little piece of the puzzle, so to speak. Oh, great. We're trapped in here. God. 
gonna punch through the through the window. See what happens. Um. Like, like the whole. So the, there's no. Try and put a hand through it. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, your hand goes through it. Um, you, you're not really able to reach uh, much further than you know just outside the board. Um, now, if you wanted to reach further out, you could try. Uh, you could stick your whole your whole arm and shoulder through that little hole, and you know try to reach out further if you really want to. Hmm. Hmm. Um. But just sticking your hand out, nothing seems to happen. Interesting. We might, we might be able to get out through this window. Might. I still don't trust it. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, did you want to try anything here, Donald? Um, after seeing the attempt with portal magic didn't seem to go well because at first like he thought maybe you know use metal magic to get the bars off um but then seeing how uh she was affected by it he decided not to mm. um so not going to try at the windows, but going to just continue walking down the hall. And I'm going to go down the hallway that doesn't have doors. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you walk down that hallway and uh, uh, nothing seems to happen. Uh, oddly enough, for once, it's just a hallway. Um, Nora, are you following, or, or are you um, yeah. experimenting more with the windows? No, I, I, I've had, I've, I've, had, I've gotten the information I'm, I was after. Okay. Um. So once you uh, both go to the end of that hallway, uh, you see a reception area. Um, so there's a nice big reception desk, uh, and there's two big uh, French-style doors. Uh, that looks like the entrance to the building. Um, the the room is large. There's stairs that go up to the second floor uh, on either side of the reception desk. Um, almost like a like a plantation home style, where there's just these two big fancy staircases that that come down uh, on either side of this desk uh, and seem to go up to the second floor. Um, there's also a hallway leading off in the other direction. Um, it looks much like the one that you just came through, just, you know, continuing on further into the building. Uh, Donald uh, wants to look around at the desk. You said there's like a front desk thing. There is. Can I look around it? Uh, absolutely. Go ahead and roll sight. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to see if I hear anything. Twenty one plus five, so twenty six. Uh, twenty six. So with that, um, yeah, you do find some stuff. Uh, you manage to find a, a clipboard which has paper on it that you can actually read. Uh, it looks like this was written on relatively recently. Um, you get the impression that it was probably not intended to be left here. Um, and, uh, it talks about, uh, test subjects, uh, about looking for, um, particular, uh, aptitude with magic, um, and about, uh, notes about transferring consciousness from one body to another. Huh. So I'm gonna say out loud, hey, I think I found the pervert's plan. Awesome. What is it? I was talking here about a lot, like he wants people who are good at magic and I think he wants to steal our body. 
Yeah, not happening this time. You hear a voice on the speakers that seem to be all throughout the the building. Uh, well, looks like somebody's not as stupid as he looks. Just flip him off. Same. You just hear him laugh and uh, say, well, you figured out what I plan to do with some of you. There's still the matter of, you know, the the prize uh, for the winner, and I did mention second place does get to go free. Yeah, I don't trust you. Well, trust is really irrelevant. I seem to be holding all the cards here, so you can either win and get the prize, you can come in second and get to leave, um, or you can do neither of those things, and perhaps I take over your body. Or perhaps you just die. Yeah, you ain't touching this body. It's mine. <laughs> Sad. Um, okay. Uh, with that, we're gonna hop back over to, uh, Nana and Cliff. <laughs> Uh, so, um, Cliff, you mentioned you went upstairs, right? Uh, as you walk upstairs, uh, you hear, uh, the sound of somebody, uh, it sounds almost like a small child skipping, uh, along with a, a little girl's laughter, um, and it sounds really creepy, because it's way too happy for this place. Uh, is it coming from the direction that I am currently facing? Uh, yes, it is. Shit. Um, I'm going to uh, hold the pipe behind my back and wave friendly. Hello, little girl. Where's your mommy? Uh, this little girl with, uh, blonde hair, um, that, uh, some of our, our players here probably, uh, recognize, um, just sort of giggles and goes, oh, uh, my daddy's upstairs. <laughs> You're not supposed to be on this floor. Ah, uh, well, I'm the best, so, uh, I'm just trying to win this competition here, little girl. Maybe you want to take me to go see your daddy, so uh, we can just end all this uh, this this uh, this kerfuffle, should we? Mm, that's cheating. Uh, he doesn't really like cheating. Cheating wins. Not that kind of cheating. Nana is trying to climb up the stairs. Or what stairs? Pile of rubble, uh, rubble. carrying a uh, uh, child. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. In that case, uh, roll roll might to make sure that you can do so <laughs> with that extra weight. Oh, good. My dump stat. Why? Why? <laughs> uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Um. Uh, how do I put this? Um, you, you can get up the stairs at risk to, uh, Bella bleeding out, um, because of being essentially manhandled while being, uh, near death. Hmm. Can but you I... could technically get yourself and Bella up there. Can I, uh cauterize some of the worst of the wounds? Uh, you can certainly try. <laughs> I like... There is literally no other option here. Like, <laughs> behind us is shadows. The way, way in front is blocked. There's upstairs. 
but if I go upstairs with the child, the child dies. Like, child bleeds out. Unless I do something else. And obviously, my medicine skill is not high enough for that. So, um, um, how about... You could leave Bella there and go try to find medical supplies. That's a, as another that's option. a good idea. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. Just considering uh, Cliff is not helping, um, which... He will be punished for. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, she just doesn't see a better option. So she just kind of, now that she's at least stable enough, sets her carefully down, takes off her, her coat, puts it on top of her, and then uh, climbs up with that 18. Uh, okay. Then, yeah, uh, with just yourself going up the, the rubble, it's no problem at all. Um, and yes, uh, you catch up with Cliff, and uh, you can see this little girl um, who looks entirely too cheerful and happy to be here um, staring at you. Oh, hey, here's another, uh, here's another child for you to rescue. You want to you wanna take a crack at it? Um, this wasn't one of the kids we were here with but uh hello why do you talk so quiet i can't hear you i i just uh i don't i don't like raising my voice unless someone deserves to be yelled at I... do you know what this one's saying i have She's looking no at idea do you know where one could do you live here? Of course I live here. This is my home. Oh, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. Um, well... I'm really not supposed to talk to the test subjects, though. But you kind of came into my area, so I guess it's okay. Well, um, do you know where one can find medical supplies? Do I look like a doctor? This looks like a hospital. But do I look like a doctor? Yes, the smallest doctor. You're really weird. Uh, and she kind of tilts her head a little bit, like she's listening to something. And she goes, uh-huh. <gasps> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I have to go now, so bye. Um, and there's a, a gate that opens up underneath both of you. And you find yourself, uh, both teleported, um to a different part of this floor. Um, it takes you a few seconds to catch your bearings, um, but you're able to see uh, two little bare feet uh, of this little girl uh, as she walks right around the corner out of your sight. So all you can really see is just like, um, like the hem of her dress and two little bare feet go around the corner uh, as she runs off. Um, and you're able to tell that she teleported you not very far away from... Uh, sorry, my pen just broke. Uh, not very far away from uh, where you just were. I'm going to get up, dust myself off, and start walking forward. Okay. Uh, as you walk forward, you can see there's... Um, uh, they're like uh, surgical bays down here. Or up here, I should say. Uh, so you see operating rooms, um, lots of surgical equipment, um, like tab uh, operating tables and uh, things like that, uh, as well as uh, scalpels and surgical tools. Um, is Nana immediately following me? Yeah, she's just like, hey, wait a minute. Uh, I'm walking hurriedly, and as soon as I see that there are medical supplies, 
I want to stealthily pocket a bottle of alcohol. Uh, okay, go ahead and roll blend in for that. Uh, blend in. Ooh, ooh, that's not. Oh, that's not social. Oh no. <laughs> Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, yeah, you actually do a pretty good job of of pocketing that. Um, uh, so you're able to do so discreetly. Great. Uh, so Nana, what are you doing? Uh, I mean, one, there's Michael Supply, so she's slightly distracted by that. Uh, she wants to see if there's anything that can help the child immediately. Uh, okay. Uh, you can roll uh, medicine to figure out what supplies are going to be useful. Sure. Uh, that is 14. 14. Um, you are not sure what's what. You can't tell mm. uh, Tylenol from <laughs> morphine. Um, Why is this packaging so old? Was, was this from like the 1920s or something? I don't... While that's happening... <laughs> But wait, there's more. Uh, so while that's happening, um, since neither of you uh, followed uh, the little girl, uh, we're going to pop over to where she's at, over by Bella. Uh, Bella, uh, you find yourself, um, after having been buried by Rebel, uh, the next moment you find yourself uh, awakening to uh, this, uh, this guy... Uh, who has a white streak in his hair, uh, looks very poshly dressed, uh, and sounds a whole lot like the voice you've been hearing on the radio, uh, and it seems you've been patched up uh, just enough to wake up. And he offers you a deal. Uh, so he looks at you and says, Well, I see you've managed to literally bring the roof down on yourself, but I'm not one to waste valuable resources, so I'll make you a deal. Uh, if you will work against all of your friends and try to kill them off uh, as best as you can, I'll let you live. And if they kill you first, then oh well. Uh, if you try to escape, then you'll die. But if you'd like to work for me, you get to live. How does that sound? Does this mean that I lost? Uh, yes, quite objectively. If I help you, is there a chance that I could win? You know what, sure, why not? Yes. Okay. I'll help you. Alright, very good then. Uh, and he looks over to the little girl that brought you here. And he goes, uh... Sorry, dear, could you, uh, go and fetch the blue vial? No, no, not that one. The other one. Yes, that one. Thank you, dear. Uh, and the little girl comes skipping up with, uh, this uh, little vial of, um, it's like a weird blue-colored liquid. Uh, it doesn't look very appetizing or like anything you've ever really seen before. Um, but Xander tells you to drink it and you'll feel better. Is this part of the test? Well, it's part of the do you want to live test. Because without this, you're going to die. Okay. Is she playing? And she looks very pointedly at Sari. Oh no, this is, uh, this is my uh, daughter. Okay. So then she'll drink it. Okay. Uh, as soon as you do, you uh, recover full hit points, and it actually adds another 10 onto your max hit points. Wow. Well, that was nasty, but I do feel a lot better. 
Oh, splendid. Now we'll get you back with your little friends and um, feel free to... Actually, you know what? Make up whatever story you want. I want to see what you come up with. Uh, if you're clever enough, that might put you back in the running for being the winner. Really? Uh, yes, of course. Really. Why not? Okay. All right, Sari, would you take the this one back to her little friends? Uh, and Sari just giggles and nods and uh, opens up a gate. And Bella, you find yourself uh, suddenly stepping through a wall into the reception area uh, behind Donal and Nora. Whoa, why didn't you guys wait for me? She, uh, Nana's surprised. She's like, I was looking for medicine to help you. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, she's behind Nora and Donal. Oh, Nora and Donal. Uh, oh, in the reception area. Okay, wrong. Not Nana. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Similar names. <laughs> mm, Donal's gonna look and just say, you were decidedly squished. Yeah. I don't trust this at all. This is all funky. No, I was on the other side of the rubble. Okay. Yeah, sure. I totally believe you. Then how'd you, you get on I... the other side of it? Well, I had that. It took me a while, but I had to use my magic to kind of help me move things around. You know, um, there's lots of metal in there. Yeah, I know. So, uh, cool, I guess. Yeah, well, not cool if you're going to keep leaving me behind. I thought that we were kind of in a pact. I never agreed to any pact. Sorry, kid. Whatever, just... Herbert wants our bodies, so. Mm -hmm. And not in the, not the sexual way. Wait, you mean the guy that we woke up in the room with? No, nah, the voice. That's weird. Well, I wouldn't say much about the situation is super normal, so. Well, have you guys found a way out yet? No, apparently you can't portal out. Tried that. Hmm. And I assume if you go uh, through the window, you'll end up not where you want to go. Uh, Bella, you also can see everything else that they saw. So you do see the, the front entrance here. So you can't leave from the doors? Haven't tried yet, but after seeing what happened when uh, she tried to go through the window, not too uh, excited to try it. Hmm. But you're more than welcome. But I just think if some crazy dude's gonna lock us up like that, I don't think they're just gonna let us walk out the front door. I mean, I, 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 say, I assume you can try. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> so, do, uh, do you try the door, Bella? Um... Yes. Okay. Uh, the door opens. It doesn't seem to be locked. Um, and you can see outside. Um, would you like to make a sight roll to inspect anything a little bit more closely? Or are you just uh, kind of good to get the general lay of the land and keep walking? 
Uh, I'm gonna do a sight roll. Okay. Let's find it. Can I look at it too? Absolutely. Fifteen. I also look. Uh, yeah, everybody can look for sure. Uh, so the fifteen, um, you notice that there's, uh, uh, you know, the woods a little bit off in the distance. There's um, a big roundabout with a, a non-functioning fountain in the middle of it, um, and you can see a road that leads off away from the building. Um, also, a couple of palm trees uh, out front. Oh. Uh, what did you get, Riley? Uh, 19. A 19? Uh, you see all of that, and you, you also notice um, there is uh, um, the the roundabout is, is made of uh, these different bricks, uh, as is the sort of patio and, and walkway down. And uh, you notice that uh, some of them are, are red and some of them are blue, and the blue ones kind of sort of form uh, a line uh, across one section of the patio. Looks a little bit odd and out of place. Like a line to somewhere or like a line like separating something? Uh, it doesn't look like it's pointing in the direction, so maybe separating. Okay. So is it like horizontal in front of me or like off to the side, like splitting the patio in half from the door or like half from the um, road? Uh, so it's maybe six or seven good long steps out from the doorway and it just goes across the walkway uh, going. Uh, so uh, if you imagine stairs going down, it would maybe basically or maybe be across uh, the top stair. Okay. That kind of a, a thing. So she's going to go out and then she's going to like just walk until she reaches the line. Okay. And just kind of turn around and be like, see? It's fine. Let's go. Uh, I, I got a 20 for sight. Did I see all of that too? Uh, yeah, you notice all the same stuff. Uh, cool. I'm going to see if I trust it, because right now I'm not trusting it. Uh, okay. <laughs> the the air, by the way, um, it smells like an autumn day. It's, it's a bit cold, um, but it's fresh air, and uh, everything seems fine outside. Yeah, I don't trust it. Uh, that's a 18 plus 5. Uh, yeah, the outside seems fine. Uh, you don't notice any, you know, like traps or uh, anything obvious distortions, that. Distortions. Uh, yeah, nothing that you can see. Um, you do notice one more thing. Um, so off in the distance, there is a graveyard um, off to one side, and uh, in front of that graveyard is a gazebo. <laughs> throw in. Uh, but that's it. Oh, goodness. Can I roll gut feeling too? Absolutely. Does it says cynic only affects discipline checks, right? Uh, let me double check. Yeah, it says disgusting. I haven't read up on cynic in a while. Gain plus five on discipline checks to resist charm and deception. Uh, yeah, that would definitely apply here. Okay. So. For for anything discipline in this that you've been doing, uh, that would apply. Eighteen plus five, so twenty-three. Twenty-three. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
things seem just fine for you. Um, uh, you're not sensing anything nefarious. Uh, you do notice the graveyard, and it's kind of creepy. Um, and the gazebo looks a little bit out of place. Um, you couldn't say why, but it just seems a little bit off. Um, but there does seem to be a road that leads away. Okay. I'll step outside, but I'm not going to walk past where... Um... Oh my god. What's the character's name? Bella. I'm not going to walk past Bella? where she's standing. I'm going to stand a couple of feet. Back. Okay. Uh, nothing, nothing happens. It's just a nice autumn day. Oh, good. Why, There's no why, way it can be this easy. Like the way you turn back. Why would he make it this easy? Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Maybe there's other obstacles down the road. I guess, but. It doesn't seem like it would be very much in his control at that point. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. I might be. <laughs> what are you? What do you think, Nora? I think we should go down the road. Can we wait in a second? Well then, go right ahead. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to fuck it. If, if I if I stay in if I stay in the, the mansion, I'm gonna die if I run. Probably gonna die anyway. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Nora, you continue on past the blue line uh, of bricks and start walking down the road. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Um, do you hesitate at all at the, the blue bricks? No. Okay. Uh, as you step over the line, nothing seems to happen. Uh, and you make it past the sort of driveway and you get to the actual road itself. Um, would you like to uh, take a closer look at anything, get any sort of sense of anything uh, about the road? Gut feeling? Okay. Uh, 16 total. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from it looking like it needs some repair, uh, there's some potholes and things like that. Um, road seems fine. Mm -hmm. It's still on edge. <laughs> Just gonna keep going. This seems okay. way too easy. Uh... All right, um, you walk down the, the road a little ways. Um, uh, is there, I mean, you're on edge. Is there any, anything in particular that you're, you're looking out for uh, or that you're trying to figure out? Um, anything aside from this seems too easy, is, is there anything specific that you're, you're trying to look for? Temporal distortions, shadows that move. Uh... There's no moving shadows. Um, there's no, no walls rippling or anything like that. Um, mm. Everything seems pretty quiet. Too quiet. <laughs> well, I'll take the uh, W. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Donald, do you... Um, do you follow Nora, uh, or do you wait until Nora's walked down the road a ways? Uh, or do you not follow at all? Uh, 
uh, Lisa? Um, I wait a bit and then I'll walk. I'll head down the road as well. Okay. Um, about the time that you, uh, if you're waiting a little bit, I'd say probably about the time you get down the driveway and you get to the road, uh, you see Nora kind of slowly fade away, like uh, Field of Dream style. Um, just the more and more that she walks away, she becomes less and less uh, visible until she disappears. I'm going to stop. Okay. And turn around. All right. Uh, Bella, what are you doing? So as soon as uh, Donal starts to walk away, she'll slowly back up and back into the doors and try and find a way to lock the doors shut. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a lock on the door. Uh, they are French doors, um, so like there's, it's mostly windows. Um, so it would be pretty easy to break a window and unlock it again, um, just with the door lock, but it does have one. Hmm. You could also, um, I don't know, Let's use see. metal magic to do something? Yeah. What metal is there? Um, Am I going to crush myself the... again? <laughs> There's the door handle, the locking mechanism itself, the door frame. Um, all of that is metal. Hmm. Okay. Rewind. Okay. So what she's actually going to do, she's going to try and pickpocket uh Donal and get the scalpel. Okay. Okay. Uh, was she, this is gonna be a blend in roll. So, was she around when Donal picked up the scalpel? So first, she'd have to figure out if she can sense the metal on him because she wasn't. Oh. Okay. Um. So. Okay. Um, that's a twenty-two. So Yep, you sense magic, or uh, you sense metal with your magic. Okay. Um, so be a blend in and then a nimbleness. Uh, blend in to make sure that you can do so discreetly, nimbleness to make sure that you can actually get it out of the pocket. Okay. 16 and a 17. I have alert. Would this uh, okay. affect it at all? It would. Uh, would you like to roll sight? Twenty-eight. Okay, so Bella, you're able to get the scalpel out of out of their pocket. Um, however, uh, Donald, you you notice it. You you're aware of what's going on. Uh, fuck, are you doing? Sorry, force of habit. Hmm. Yeah, I know that goes. How about you hand that back over? Um, I think I'll keep it. Uh, can I roll magic engineering to use my metal magic to take it from? Uh, sure. There's no way this will end poorly. Uh, go ahead and roll magic engineering. <laughs> I have to keep reminding myself this is a one-shot. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, you, Bella, you, you feel uh, a tug on the uh, on the scalpel. Like, it's trying to be pulled from your hand, uh, but it's not strong enough to, to rip it out of your grasp. I'm sorry, but... I have to win this. And she's going to lunge forward to cut 
Donal. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do some PvP here. Uh, so, uh, Bella, go ahead and roll um, your... Uh, it's going to be physical plus um, single attack melee. Uh, and your roll. And uh, Donal, you can pick your uh, defense style since this is the opening of combat. Okay. And, and then roll. So that's a 19. Uh, okay. And I'm gonna roll dodge. Dodge! 17. Uh, okay, so that's gonna hit. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. On the scalpel, it was, uh, D8? D6. 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 It's a 5. Alright, uh... So Donald, you will take five damage, uh, a plus physical. Uh, so what's your physical stat? Mine? Oh, zero. Oh. So it's still five. Okay, still five. Uh, okay. Uh, what would you like to do in response? Um. So I don't know if, because I had this on my inventory, like that he had a slingshot. I don't know if Xander okay. would have wanted uh, to keep it. But... Probably would have been uh, considered inconsequential. So they probably would have left it on you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take a step back and fire a stone. Uh, okay. Go ahead and roll your attack. And then, uh, uh, Bella, what defense are you using? So it's a single attack ranged, uh, or yeah, single attack ranged. What would I roll for that? Uh, same, same thing, pretty much. Uh, it's going to be physical, I think. Um, let me pull up the character sheet real quick, because it'll actually say on the side. Um, single attack ranged is, yes, physical. Okay, so... Uh, if it's a gun or something like that, that's when it's mental. Oh, okay. So physical is two, and then would it be a d6 as well? Uh, I think so. That sounds about right. Uh, and then Riley, what was your uh, defense that you were using? Sorry, deflect it. Can I do that? Uh, yeah. Oh, I got boy. a nat one. Well, <laughs> I got a seven. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, you uh, you try to use the sling, and the, uh, the 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 elastic on it snaps and just smacks you in the face. And you mm. take one damage. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, so Bella, are you uh, are you attacking again, or uh, what are you doing? Yep, attacking again. All right. That's a ten. All right, a ten. Versus uh, Donald's dodge. Let's see here. Seventeen. Um, okay, so that's gonna work. So, uh, so with melee going into dodge, you, I forgot you actually get a plus five to your attack, but it's still not enough. Um, so you dodge out of the way. Uh, what do you want to do now? Punch the brat. <laughs> okay. Takes one and uh, not one. Yep. Hey. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and uh, and roll for that. Would that also be d6? Uh, for, uh, 
Oh, was uh, the 17 your attack? No, that was, uh, my 17 was a dodge. Okay, so you just have to roll uh, attack, uh, which would be your, your melee uh, attack roll. And then, yes, the damage would be a d6. Melee attack. Wait, where is the melee attack? Um, let me take a look at your sheet here. Uh, so what you'd want to do is single attack melee, and d6. Um, so if you just hit uh, the the button, the the die roller button on attacks, where it says single attack melee, you just type oh, it in. Oh, there it so, is. Uh, this is there you go. And the weapon, do I do weapon damage or bonus to hit? Um, uh, neither, just the uh, attack roll for now. Uh, so the, the die right next to it oh, where okay. it says bonus gotcha. to hit, yeah. 13. 13, okay. Uh, Bella, it is up to you to deflect that. Oh, eight. eight. So that's going to hit. Uh, so you're getting punched. <laughs> So now you'd roll the d6 gotcha. plus your physical. Uh, six. Uh, so yeah, you'll take six uh, damage there, Bella. Okay. Bella has temporary um, HP right now, doesn't she? Oh yeah. Um, I do. Basically. Um, she actually got... Uh, a bonus to her her max HP, so it's it's just straight up extra hit points. Um, so yeah, you haven't even gotten through that yet. In the interest of time, uh, are are you both wanting to take this as a fight to the death? Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, if she's going to, then yeah, I may as well too. <laughs> Lord of the Flies up are in, you in both here. <laughs> yeah. Let's get the miners to beat uh, the crap out of each other. Okay. Because we are almost at at, uh, at three hours already. Uh, are you both okay if you just do one more uh, attack roll each? Um, and if, if you... Whoever wins that exchange uh, is the winner? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Bella, let's start with you. Uh, roll whatever attack that you'd like. Uh, that's 13. Uh, okay. And then, uh, Donald, go ahead and roll your defense. Um, My defense? Mm -hmm. What, whichever defense that you'd like. 17. All right, so you dodge. Um, go ahead and roll your attack. Uh, same same deal, Bella. Uh, roll defense on it. It still won't let me roll. It still says rolling the dice. Four. I got a four. And then I got a six. Okay. Uh, so that's that's a draw. <laughs> uh, you can either let it be a draw or you can keep going. I mean, um, it's your call, Raven. Whatever you. <laughs> I'm I'm good either way. If you want to call, have a have it be a draw and you don't try to kill each other, uh, that's fine. Or uh, you can keep going until you know somebody gets ahead. Uh, Bella wants to win, so she's gonna keep going. Okay. Okay. That's that's a twenty. Okay. Cat, could you just? <laughs> Could you not? Let me dodge. <laughs> Eight. Okay. Uh, so you've got one more chance to do something here before you die. Uh, go ahead and and roll uh, your attack. Four. 
All right, you gotta beat a four to live, Bella. <laughs> All right. Long story short, Bella succeeds in murdering her friend. Uh, her uh, crush, as I recall from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sadly, Dodal is killed just outside the asylum. Uh. With that, we're gonna hop over to. Oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot to, to say what happened to Nora. So Nora, um, after a while yeah. of walking, uh, it gradually dawns on you that you haven't heard anything. Not a bird. Not a bug. The wind's not blowing. None yeah. of the shadows have moved either. Yeah. Uh, eventually, you realize that you're in a in a, a space where. Time literally stands still, and there's nothing here. Um, and you can't find your way out, so you're just sort of stuck in this like timeless limbo, uh, where with an empty world. Well, um, better than having my so, body taken over. So yeah, uh, you're essentially uh, alone for all eternity. Um, but on the plus side, um, you don't have to deal with people, I guess. Um, and you have the entire world uh, as it stands um, in like a 1920s uh, era world. Um, so all the buildings are there, the food's still there. Uh, the, the, the world is literally your, your oyster. Uh, you're just alone in it and time doesn't move. Uh, so that's the end that Nora finds in all of this. Uh, let's hop back to Nana and Cliff. Um, so the the girl disappeared. Um, if either of you go check, you can see that Bella's no longer there. Um, <clears throat> what do you want to do? Yeah, I imagine Nana, as soon as she doesn't find... I mean, I imagine she finds at least bandages or something, but once she looks down, she's like... Uh, yeah. Uh, Wait. Oh, she she's gone. Oh, that's. I made myself a little sad. Very well. Um, and then she turns to Cliff. It's like no thanks to you. You certainly were no help. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, right. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's look around and I'm sure we can find something in here. Uh, I'm going to go over to a drawer, look inside and go, ah, holy shit. Never would have thought I'd find this here and take a step away from it. She's like, you know, you seem like the kind of person i thought maybe you'd be a good leader the leader of a group but i don't think so i just really want to find those children but i think as long as you're here you're gonna be a threat and she's gonna burn him okay so for <laughs> for, for reference sake where does her fire does her fire always start from her hands because i know when it when it goofed that one time it was on her hand um what i imagine um, is well i mean it's your game system but what i kind of imagine is just her gesturing and the fire appearing kind of where she gestured that that was what yeah I, I think i've never really given it a lot of thought but uh, i've always pictured the system having the the fire can show up wherever you want it to show up but the power has to start from the caster yes so um so if you know that a caster is doing something you could potentially excuse me potentially prevent them from doing so yeah uh, as soon as she starts giving me this feel uh i'm gonna throw my bottle of uh of rubbing alcohol on her oh Oof. Uh, okay. Let's do this. Uh, Nana, go ahead and roll your magic attack. Okay. Uh, and then Cliff, roll a, uh, ranged attack. Ranged attack. 
So that's gonna be physical Bro, plus single range. I'm bringing out good dice train. for this. Alright. Because <laughs> it's about to get metal as fuck. Metal as fuck. Very uh, nice. So that's just 1d20 plus 2. Not a very physical character. It's 19. So, Whoa! So 19. 19, huh? Like total 19. or? 19 okay. total. Okay. Um, and then Cause... also go ahead and roll your defense versus the magic attack. Uh, okay. Seven, 17 here for my magic attack. So that's actually... Uh, oh, yours was a 19 to dodge? Uh, no, mine was a 19 uh, to, to, uh, to, or... throw the, to throw the alcohol. My dodge oh, was... Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. 21. Okay. So you avoid the magical attack. Uh, so... Uh, Nana, it's a, a 19, uh, is what you have to defend against. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do absorb. Okay. You absorb just getting hit with alcohol while you're on fire? Yeah, I absorb uh, that alcohol. Well, how do you think my magic works? You've only been drunk once. Don't talk to me about <laughs> absorbing alcohol. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just giggling the, at the fact you turned into Arnold Schwarzenegger there for a minute. <laughs> Don't tell me you know how to absorb the alcohol. <laughs> Twenty-one to die, uh, absorb. To absorb. Okay. So, your magic misses its mark, uh, and the bottle of alcohol just smacks against your shoulder and doesn't break, and it clatters to the ground. So it's a complete dud on both of both of your yeah, sides. Is the alcohol spilled out, or is it still in there? Nope. It just Ooh. clatters Nana, to the ground. Nana bends over and picks that up. And Mukade. What now? Uh, I'm going to summon a uh, swarm of Mukade. Which are... Uh, uh, can I put a link into chat for what Mukade is? If you are squigged out by bugs, you should not click on this link. Uh, sure. I'm guessing some sort of beetle? Oh no! Oh no, it's worse. I'm excited. Okay. Oh, those! Creepy bugs. Yeah, yep. okay. The bane of my existence. Oh! Just big, oh, squeezy centipedes. centipedes. Big, big squiggles of leaves. Oh, okay. Both very, very bites. poisonous. Yeah, Size yeah, of can, bananas. Yeah, they can kill you. Yeah, they're nasty. Ooh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's creepy. Yeah. Look how they they're know really good mothers, uh, though. Like, surprisingly good for the insect kingdom, especially. <laughs> okay. Fun fact. Uh, in that case, Cliff. <laughs> yep. I need a magical engineering roll to see how effective your summoning spell is. Coming right up. Uh, magical engineering. Oh, 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 oh. oh man, I got so many modifiers in that. That's only a 19. Uh, let's see here. I took the uh, engineer uh, for oh, magic engineering. Thing. Okay, so you're able to summon a small swarm of them with one eighth of your current HP. My current HP is 25. So, uh, an eighth of that. Okay. So, like, three. Three in a percentage. So, they're like literally a, a small swarm of these centipedes. Yes, yeah, just summoning them on her if I can. Uh, you can summon them adjacent, okay. uh, but you do have to still make an attack roll with them. Cool. Uh, and that'll be a magic attack roll. Alrighty. So I have... Uh, if you'd like to do that on the same turn, then uh, what you can do is go for a bonus action point. Okay, so I had to spend um, two bonus action points to summon it, right? Uh, just one. Oh, just one? Okay. Uh, so then, yes, I will spend a bonus action point to summon it. Oh, if I would have known that was an uh, option, I would have I would have done done things differently. Um, okay, uh, yeah, then I will use a bonus action point to try to have them attack in the same turn. 
Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll for that. So there should be a little die roll button next to the bonus action point. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, it's basically 1 through 10, you don't get it. 11 through 20, you do. That's how it works. Well. Uh, that'll do it for you automatically. Nice. So you get the bonus action point. Uh, and you can make a magic attack roll now. So that's d20 plus your spiritual attribute uh, plus any training you have in magic weapons. Okay, so d20 plus spiritual, which is uh, 3 plus 1. So plus d20 plus 4 total. Ah, darn. 18. Okay. 18. All right, so uh, Nana, you're getting attacked by creepy centipede-looking things. Uh, it's an 18. How do you want to do this? Uh, 18, um, let's see, absorb, is that, yeah. Uh, yep, you can do that. Um, that will make this a, uh, what was your roll originally, 16, uh, Zan? Uh, for, for summoning? Uh, for the attack oh, for the roll, attack 14 roll, plus. Uh, 18. 20, 18. 26 to absorb. Uh, so an 18, <laughs> an 18 will become 23 because you're using absorb, and this is a magic attack. Um, so you get a bonus uh, because of the uh, magic beats absorb on the defense, but still rolled higher, um, even with that. So you're able to avoid the, the creepy centipedes. For now. <laughs> Um, over the intercom, um, I doubt any of you, uh, any of your characters would know what this is, but I know probably all the players do, uh, the Mortal Kombat music starts playing. <laughs> Xander, fuck off! <laughs> nice. God damn it, Xander. Um, <laughs> uh, what would you like to do, Rowan? Um, so, uh, Nana is going to focus of course on the user more than the spell insects because you can just summon more right uh and will uh throw can she throw the alcohol at him uh you can certainly try like he did to me sure uh, it's gonna be a ranged attack actually what she's going to do is make a firewall. All right. So fire You're gonna circle. You're going to Norton it up? Yeah. Fire circle around <laughs> her so those bugs can't come through again. And that there's no clear uh, shot. Okay. Um, you don't really have to roll an attack, so just spend a bonus action point for the effect. Okay. Uh, and roll magic engineering. Magic engineering it is, my friend. Okay. Are you ready for this? Come on, botch. Nope, it sure ain't. <laughs> uh, all right, that is a 24. 24. Uh, yeah. It's metal you, dice, though. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's basically like what you had uh, with the shadows. So it's about knee height, certainly high enough to uh, thwart the insects uh, from getting through. So success there. Is there anything else you wanted to do or try to do? Let's see, how many bonus actions do I have left? Um, so I am going, can I open the bottle running. of alcohol? Huh? I was gonna say, running is also an option, just, just heads up. Oh, yes. There's an idea. Um, yeah, no, she's going- Unlike most of the time, peace actually is an option. She is going to, uh, I guess, step backwards over her flames uh, down downstairs, but throw the bottle of alcohol as she goes into the scent, into the flames. Cause an explosion. Okay. Um, so, so you would retreat be, downstairs. Would that be a bonus action? Uh, yes, to throw the, the, uh, 
the bottle, it would be you'd need another attack action. So, but the other one is just action. a movement, right? Yep, you still got your movement for this turn. Okay. Albeit, uh, we are I doing. Get, I get the bonus action. I loose got combat turns, but. Uh, okay. Um, and then, uh, to throw, what do I need to roll? Nimbleness. Uh, it's a ranged attack. A ranged attack. It's just a ranged attack. Okay. Whoa, that's a nat twenty. Nice. You got a nat twenty to hit the floor. Good <laughs> <Yeah>. job. <laughs> You hit the hell out of that floor. <laughs> the floor is like, ow! Uh, I can't believe you've done this. Can, uh, you... can, can I remind you of, of one thing, Raven, that I think might influence the next sentence? Uh, would it be the curse that you it have? It would be the curse that I have and the fact that I am unlucky. I forgot about the unlucky oh! part. Uh, but I had not forgot about the curse part, which is, uh, actually what was influencing my next sentence, uh, which I'm about to reveal here. No! Uh, so, you hit the hell out of the floor, uh, or I should say the hell into the floor. It explodes, uh, with that alcohol, and it sets fire to all sorts of other things. Uh, and now it's literally a game of the floor is lava. Uh, unfortunately, Cliff, you are standing on the floor. Uh, so, good news, uh, you have a chance to roll nimbleness to get out of this. However, I can make you re-roll it twice. <laughs> Alright. Uh... I also have, uh... I was gonna say, I also have 3d6, but I'm, I'm, uh, this isn't Monster of the Week, it's fundamental, so, never mind. Thirteen. Thirteen? Don't even have to make you use unlucky. That is not enough. Uh, so you're on fire. Uh, you're going to take uh, something like that would probably be around 10 uh, damage uh, initially, plus you're on fire. Mm -hmm. um, uh, dumb question, but I have to ask, do you want to try again? Um, I, I, are, are there windows? Uh, you're pretty much... Uh, what, what, what uh, I've noticed on the... earlier that there were that there were windows facing outside or anything in this room. Not from where you are right now. Basically, the only things around you uh, there's a hallway behind you um, that you could try to get to. Um, there's uh, also some offices uh, right there. Again, it's it's going to be the same role no matter what for for that type of stuff. Um, the only other option you really have as far as where you can go is climbing on some furniture, which again is another nimbleness roll. Um, or you could try leaping through the firewall and getting out of the lava. Yeah, I think... Sort of launching yourself towards her. I think... But you're going to take some damage. Yeah, I think I'm going to uh, launch myself through the firewall and run after her with my scaldingly hot lead pipe. Okay. Uh, for this one, let's do Ooh. a might roll. To just launch yourself through the, the, the flame wall. You're going to take some damage for going through All it. Right. But 16 will be enough. Uh, so you take, we'll call that 5 damage for going through the firewall. Uh, meanwhile, uh, somewhere through the fire and the flames is playing. Um, <laughs> this is like the second off, time in, two, in, in like two weeks. Is this just my <laughs> theme song on your channel, Raven? I guess, I guess, if it's, if you stop going through the fire and the flames, it, it won't happen. Um, so yes, you're still on fire, you're very burned, uh, but you are within uh, red hot lead pipe swinging distance of Nana. All right, I'm gonna make that, make that attack roll. Uh, is that single attack melee? Yeah. All right, so that's a plus four. Oh! Oof. Just the 13 big oofs, dog. Big oofs. 13. Big oofs. Uh, all right. So, Nana, you see... Uh... <laughs> yeah, you see a very angry, very on fire cliff launching through your firewall uh, with a red hot lead pipe swinging towards your face. What do you do? I absorb it! <laughs> With my face. Okay. 
Let hot Go pipe to the roll. face. <laughs> Let hot pipe. Oh no! I got a one. That one. Ah. <laughs> I bought. So, I bought. That's gonna hit. Go ahead and roll. It, that's literally what happens. You try to block it with your face. Uh, go ahead and roll damage, Zan, and Oof. double it. All right, you that was 1d8 plus, uh... Plus physical. Plus physical, okay. Uh, so 1d8. Oh, that could have been so much better. Oh. Uh, that's only six damage. Uh... Oh, wait, no, eight so damage. Your, your physical's four? No, my physical is two. Okay, so eight damage. Eight damage to the face, uh, and I'm gonna throw in an extra two to make it a, a flat ten, uh, because it is a red hot flaming Ouch, pipe. Yeah. So like just the hat like a whole part of her face just is sizzling. And she lets out this shrill oh. scream. And can I try to spend an uh, an action point to do to do that, that shit again? Uh yeah. All right, Absolutely. it's my last action point or bonus action point. Uh, so that is a dicey dice on bonus action. Come on, come on! Oh, oh so close! No. Oh, damn. oh! All right, Nana, it's your turn. You just got hit in the face with a red hot pipe. Um. Yeah, no, I'm gonna finish off this mother trucker with more fire. Uh, I've got, you know, I think, yeah, two more bonus action points. So. Okay. Uh, by the way, you can't see this, but somewhere in the building, Xander is eating popcorn watching this. Uh, yeah, that, I don't think that's going to hit, but uh, it could. 12? Uh, okay, so that's a 12 magic attack to you, Cliff. So go ahead and roll the defense that you would like. All right, I'm going to dodge. Dodge. It's a ten versus a twelve, so that's gonna hit. So close. <laughs> it was a good run. Uh, so go ahead and roll your your damage there, Anna. Uh, so that's gonna be a D six plus spiritual. You're also muted. Um, one D eight for the fireball, uh, according to your book. Uh, are you trying to add a magical effect to it? A magical effect to hitting him with fire? Yes. So the way it works, uh, if you just do the <laughs> attack roll without spending a bonus action point, uh, you can just do straight up damage like you can any other weapon. If you want to uh, add an effect, like add extra damage to it, you have to do ma spend a bonus action point and do magic engineering. I was already spending. So for the 1d8, it's a DC 20 to get the 1d8 oh, fireball. Oh, okay. Because I already spent the bonus action point. I assumed every single time you used a spell. Okay. Uh, that It's just when you want to add an effect to it. If you just want to do straight up damage, then it's just the roll. Okay. Um, but if you want to make it more powerful, uh, you can roll magic engineering. If you get a DC 20 or higher, then you'll do more damage. DC 20, that's plus spiritual, right? Or just uh -huh. my magic. And your... Okay. Magic yeah, engineering. Yeah, sure. Uh, which, which should include your, your spiritual in there. Ha ha! I rolled a 19! Nice! So you get so, it. So yeah. 1d8 yeah. plus, plus spiritual damage. Okay. Fantastic. That is... My friend, that is uh, nine points of damage. Oof. Yeah. How are you feeling there, Cliff? Ooh. Ooh, doggy, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, where, uh, where are you sitting on hit, hit points? Um, what's the minimum hit points I can be at and still be alive? Uh, zero is unconscious. Fifteen percent below that is dead. I'm I'm at uh, fifteen percent below your max. I'm at one. You're at one, so you're still conscious, but you are probably gonna die. How many hit points do you have, Nana? Uh, Nana has twenty. Has twenty. Um. Yeah. If you're okay with yeah. it, 
I'm gonna call the fight. Yeah. Um. I I think Cliff uh, is just swinging somewhat precisely, and then a little more wildly, and a little more slowly, and drops to his knees and props himself up on the the pipe that's now glowing red, and then just collapses. <laughs> All right, so uh, we ended up with Cliff Barbecue, uh, Nana, Lord, you. Kebabs, Nora uh, is lost in time, Bella's still alive, and Nana's still alive. That's two winners. Yeah, well, Nana's, Nana's just like, Nora. it's always such a shame when that has to happen. <laughs> kind of. But yeah, I hate to see it happen. It's always, it's always <laughs> a shame. I just wish that we could have worked together somehow. But you were too much of an idiot to see that, weren't you? Uh, so, with that, uh, you find yourself, uh, Bella and Nana, uh, you suddenly find yourself both uh, in a, a really nice looking doctor's office uh, with Xander sitting behind a desk. And he looks at you both and says, Congratulations! You are the first and second place winners. Now I can choose who gets first place and who gets second place. Uh, but I'm curious which would you rather have? He looks to, to Nana. I... The prize of power and uh, immortality of a sword, wealth and riches. What would you like to leave? I'd like to get to my life, please. So you want to leave? I mean, yes. Very well. Uh, he waves his hand, portal opens up underneath of you, and you find yourself outside the asylum, uh, this time not in the version that sends you into a uh, eternity of being alone <laughs> with time stopped. Uh, it's just the normal outside, you're free to go and resume your uh, frightening life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's so Bella, happy with that. <laughs> she's so you sort herself. of win. Yeah, you sort of win. Bella, uh, Xander looks at you and says, well, that makes you the first place winner. Yes, I knew it. Yes, uh, quite the underdog story. You literally came from under the rubble. And, uh, and rose to be first place. I did not expect that. Well, I suppose we should get on with the uh, giving you your prize, yes? Yes, please. Fantastic. Uh, well, Sari here. Uh, you remember Sari. Mm -hmm. uh, Sari, dear, lead Bella to the, uh, the special room uh, to go give her prize. Yes, that room. Yes. Um, Yes, very well. Uh, Sari here will lead you into the room with the prize. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I have a feeling you and I are going to get along very well. We're going to be um, very close, I think. And uh, with that, Sari leads you to a room, and we're going to uh, end our, our session here. Uh, with Sari opening the doors to an operating room and saying, just wait here. The prize will be in shortly. And uh, given what Nora and Donal, or Donal, uh, found at the reception desk, I think we all know what's going to happen to Bella. For once, Donal is telling the truth. <laughs> yep. So, uh, that's where we're going to end our session. Um, that was a lot of horrifying fun. Um, we're going to give everybody a chance to talk about their favorite parts, where we can find everybody next, uh, and all that good stuff. Um, 
And since this is a Badlands game, I always do enjoy ending it on some fun light music. So one more time. <laughs> We're gonna play the econ music. Yes! <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna go opposite order, uh, starting with Riley. Uh, what was your favorite part? Where can we find you next? And anything else that you'd like to share? Oh my gosh. Um, my favorite, like, parts, I guess, was just when the party started, like, dropping off and turning against each other. Um, specifically yeah. the moment when, like, Cliff and like Nana are together and like all of a sudden they both just like switch to like I'm gonna kill you that was awesome <laughs> um I I did like that like light switch moment yeah it was it gave me chills um you can find <laughs> me next on Wednesday here for the Tickfaw files which will be the film noir one, correct, Rowanen? Yes, and guess what? We have a special guest joining us, so I'm super excited about it. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be really exciting. I'll share, I'll share more details when it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but yes, Tick Files going to be awesome. Uh, anything else you want to share? Um, no, actually, so it's interesting because uh, I don't think Bella understood the gravity of her actions. <laughs> she saw it as a test. It didn't seem real that she was killing somebody that she had a crush on. So <laughs> it's probably for the best that she won the prize. <laughs> oh no, that's so sad. <laughs> um, I was going to say, uh, she definitely didn't understand the gravity of uh, the whole pulling the metal out of the walls situation. Ah. Gravity just... yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible. Uh, awesome. I'm glad you had fun. Um, Lisa, what was your favorite part? Um, where can we find you next? And anything else you'd like to share? Uh, getting murdered by a nine-year-old. <laughs> that was pretty great. <laughs> um, Children are fucking scary. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like this game because it's just like, it was so different from the last Badlands group. Where it's like, yeah, we had some difficulty getting along every now and then, but like, we weren't actively murdering each other. <laughs> <laughs> it quickly turned into like Lord of the Flies yeah, in here. Like, <laughs> that went Battle Royale real fast. Um, so... But yeah, that was a lot of fun. And uh, you can find me here tomorrow for, yeah. um, oh, what is it called? Uh, Animus Absentis. Yeah, um, uh, yes. Yes, that one. <laughs> Latin word that is what it's called. Latin words. <laughs> um, but I will be in that, and I'm super hyped for that. I'm excited for that, too. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, next we've got Zan. Uh, what was your favorite part? Where can we find you next? And anything else you'd like to share? Uh, yeah. So hello again. I am uh, Zan Clark, not to be confused with Xander Clark, the owner of this uh, whole asylum thing. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, God, my favorite part. Uh, this is a little bit of a wild card, but I actually, I uh, chat was absolutely on fire for this entire game because the the party was split for so much of it and i enjoyed shooting shit with rowan in the chat so much <laughs> just the uh the constant constant puns um they were absolutely delightful um as for where you can catch me ne next uh wait uh, uh, we, we're going to be running a real fun vampire game set in the depths of New Orleans come uh, oh come Tuesday afternoon. I, I do hope you all will come join in, sit a spell, and find something real nice to sink your fangs into. 
uh, if you couldn't uh, get that through my my terrible French accent, my terrible Cajun accent. Uh, I'm DMing or storytelling a game of uh, Vampire uh, starting on Tuesday afternoon, and that's going to be a super fun game titled La Famille Boucherie, um, about terrible, no longer people doing terrible things to keep a terrible world afloat. Uh, it's going to be a fantastically uh, grim and bloody good time. Uh, you can also catch me immediately after that with Raven's Game of Water. Uh, busy, busy days. Oh, that's for me. right. You're in, you're in both Tuesday games. I forgot yeah. about that. Busy days. Busy <laughs> days. Um, yes. Yeah. But the, and thank y'all so much. This is this is a delightful time. Happy I got to play. Awesome. Thank you. I uh, had a blast as well. Um, next, we've got uh, Gwen. Uh, yeah. The at Village System. Uh, what was your favorite part? Where can we find you next? And uh, anything else you'd like to share? So my favorite part was definitely the World Combat music. <laughs> like, when they started <laughs> fighting. And you hear World Combat music. But it's like, yes! Yes, fucking yes! <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh my gosh. Uh, but you can find me specifically next one shot, I guess, whenever. Uh, you can find Jacques specifically on the game tomorrow. Because <laughs> he's, mm -hmm. he's playing that game. So Awesome. I, I, I guess it's going to be a while before you see me on the game. <laughs> uh, we've got lots of really good one-shots coming up, so... Uh... So there'll, there'll definitely be uh, opportunities. Um, next, we've got Rowan. Uh, what was your favorite part? Where can we find you next? And anything else you'd like to share? My favorite was the first time Nana what, uh, raised her voice, right? And everyone's <laughs> like, oh, no, is she possessed? Like, you actually, like, is she possessed? I also loved Bella coming back with a vengeance and just killing people. This nine-year-old killer, that was <laughs> fabulous. And then just Nana just not putting up with Cliff's shit at all. Like immediately read his tone and was just like, "Yeah, no, listen, <laughs> I'm not gonna let you be in charge." <laughs> um, oh, so that was pretty great. Uh, you can find me next on Wednesday for the Tickball Files. Um, it will be a special uh, episode, uh, kind of a one-shot spin-off um, of Tikfa, introducing a new character uh, that you're playing. Uh, you're playing Dick, who's a private investigator, correct? Uh, uh, yes, Dick and, be, and it will be a uh, 1920s uh, kind of film noir uh, set in New Orleans. And then we have a special guest, which will be the Mistress of Melody on uh, from Instagram. Uh, she's a harpist and uh, does a whole bunch of, like, acting things and um, gorgeous lady, gorgeous voice and a really good friend of mine. And she will be joining us for that one. So, yay, special guest. Awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be cool. Um, well, fantastic. Uh, my favorite part... Um... It's really hard to pick a favorite part because uh, you all did really, really fun things. Um, I did particularly enjoy uh, throwing the idea out there to, to Riley being like, hey, how would you feel about uh, turning on the party? <laughs> um, and uh, so that was that was a lot of fun. I really liked um, Bella trying to trick everybody into uh, into bad things. Um, the uh the the friction between nana and cliff um was really fun to watch just slowly build until there was smoke and sparks and then literal fire <laughs> um and Actual uh fire. And yeah it, it was it was kind of neat to do a uh, a horror game where um there really wasn't a great ending for most of the party <laughs> um uh I really uh, didn't quite expect everyone to turn on each other, um, 
uh, of course Xander is going to push for that, but uh, I wasn't sure which way it was going to go uh, until, uh, until yeah, uh, Belly was was murdering uh, Donal, and everybody was just swinging at each other. It was it was uh, horrible fun. It was great. Uh, so yeah, I enjoyed all that. Uh, you can find me next. Uh, let's see, what is today? Friday. Uh, so I'll be uh, producing uh, the Void Cavalcade. Cabal Words are hard. Uh, the Void Cavalcade um, tomorrow uh, at 1 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. That's uh, going to be uh, jammed by uh, Alien J. Um, it'll be a really cool game. Uh, very uh, interesting sci-fi. It's a, a Stars Without Number, I believe is the name of the system. Um, so you'll catch me there at the intro. Uh, mostly I'll just be in chat. Uh, and then I'll be jamming uh, Animus Absentus tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, uh, which is going to be a sci-fi. Uh, if you're familiar with the TV show uh, Dark Matter, uh, it is a bit like that. Um, it is a bit of a nod to that TV show. Uh, the story will be its own deal, um, but uh, that was the inspiration. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. That's one of my favorite settings, um, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got a really great ca great cast over there as well. Uh, and with that, we're going to go on a raid. Uh, so I think we've got our raid cry, which is, <laughs> you ain't touching this body. Uh, I've got that there in chat. And we're going to go raid uh, Dice Priori. Uh, another really cool tabletop channel. Uh, they do a lot of really cool stuff over there. Uh, looks like uh, Matthew is DMing uh, tonight. Um, pretty good DM. Uh, I've watched a little bit of their stuff uh, and, and enjoyed it. So definitely give them a follow if you're not already. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye.